Okay. <laughs> wow, seeing that thumbnail in my uh, history is like somewhat nostalgic. <laughs> It's really weird seeing that thumbnail. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not used to that. <laughs> okay, there we go. Also, I noticed that the thumbnail has um, the the ratio, the aspect ratio of the thumbnail is not fitting to the actual video, which is weird because I have it at the exact ratio that uh, the YouTube thumbnails are supposed to have. So I I, I don't know YouTube. <laughs> That's all on you, apparently. So, I never thought I'd say this again. Ever. Like, ever for this channel. But, uh... <laughs> what's up, everyone? This is Spirit Rose Wolf, and welcome back to... Shin Megami Tensei 1. Yeah. For those of you who have watched my channel for the longest time, uh... You may have remembered me playing this particular game, which I will start right now. <laughs> this game, a long, long time ago, back in like, was it 2017 or 2018? I actually don't remember which year it was. But yeah, this was like one of the first big series that I uh, live streamed for this channel. And it was also the first one that I finished. <laughs> Technically, finished. So you might be asking, why am I replaying this again on the channel when I already have it done and finished and I have a whole playlist of it? Well, for multiple reasons. One, because I wanted to do a SMT review of the SMT games that I played. And because of how I recorded the previous playthroughs of SMT1, it's not exactly review worthy. I ended up having the chat on the screen, it was very low quality, and just, just very old. <laughs> Another reason is because I want to have a fresh opinion about this game. And, you know, it's, it's been years since I played it, so... Another reason is because I've been wanting to try not only the GBA version of this game, but also text display without pausing. Uh, maybe I'll have normal. Um, I wanted to try the GBA version, and I also wanted to try this No Demon Challenge run that I have on the title. So you can probably see more of it in the description. I uh, laid out the foundation of this challenge, but essentially I will not be using any demons in battle throughout this entire game. All the battling will be done with my human characters. Normal speed, without pause. Yeah, I think I'll have both of them on normal. Maybe I might switch the message speed to fast, depending on how slow it is. Attack animations will be displayed. I'll keep those on for now. Lately, I've been turning off battle animations whenever I play RPGs, mostly uh, Pokemon games. Uh, most SMT games, I usually keep the animations on because I'm kind of used to it. And automatic recovery, I've never actually used even in the GP or a SNES version. Um, but yeah, this is essentially a new version of the game. Uh, shout out to the people who created the GBA fan translation, which was released about a year ago at this point. Yeah. It got released, and now people can experience this version of the game. It is pretty awesome. I actually own a physical port, uh, a physical cartridge of this game with the English translation. Um, the bad news is, is that my GBA is kind of crapping out on me recently, so I am... Uh, wow, that was really fast. Okay, I'm used to the SNES game, or the SNES version of this game, and the speed that our character blasted through the hallway was extremely fast. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> so I, I pretty much gone through all of this before, so I probably won't be uh, doing most of the dialogue or uh, voicing it. Also, I completely forgot to figure out what I was going to name my main character in this game. Uh, should I go boring and give him the exact same name I gave him in the original game? Or should I 
Should I be different? Should I give him a brand new name or something? Hmm. <laughs> I could give him, like, a jokish name. In the, uh, GBA, uh, physical copy that I'm playing, I, I just went... I was, I was boring and I named him Spirit. <laughs> but I don't want to do that this time. I remember that the original name that I gave him was a recommendation by, uh, my friend Arsenal. I named him Mogrim after one of his characters. No, not Mogim. Mogrim. But I'm not sure if I want to keep that. Mm. You know what? This is a retread of the original playthrough, so I might as well go with the original names that I uh, gave all these characters. So let's go with uh, Mogrim then. That might be fine. Thou art Mogrim. <laughs> I'm gonna have to show that to Arsenal later. Oh, apparently we're we're known. <laughs> All right, so here's the uh, big point in the game, of, in the beginning of the game, where you have to allocate 18 points of stats, of stat points to all of your stats in this game. Just a quick note: magic and intelligence are absolutely useless on the main character. Magic sort of is sort of useful if you want to be good at negotiations, but it requires a lot of points and it's not really that well known how well it affects negotiations. Magic if you want to increase your magic defense, because there's no defense stat in this game. Well, defense for magic at the very least. If you want to be uh, a tank against magic attacks, increase your magic or intelligence. So, uh, I'm going to repeat my luck build at the end of the game, but for now, we need to at least survive the early game. So, I'm going to give Vitality up to 10, Agility up to 10 as well, Strength will go to 7, Luck will go to 7, and the rest of these 4 points can go to whatever I, uh, feel like is needed. Hmm... I do want to tank as many hits as possible, so perhaps... That looks correct. Yeah. At a certain point, we'll stop giving uh, Mogram points and vitality. Well, actually, I was about to say, maybe we could go back and give him more points and vitality so we don't have to worry about the vitality stat ever again, but nope, I don't think we can go back anymore. <laughs> That's unfortunate. The law of those upon whom the light shineth, or the chaos, they who rely upon s uh, they who- okay. Not even gonna bother reading. <laughs> On thy scale, and tread lightly, so as not to drop them. Yeah, look at this! He's like speeding through these hallways! Are the animations for the others gonna be fast? Okay, that was really fast, yeah. That is faster than the G than the uh, SNES version. Pretty impressive. <laughs> now that is GBA quality. Okay, so this is the law hero, and I remember his name being Arthur. I forget why Arsenal wanted to name him Arthur. No, I think it's uh, Arthur with a U. There we go. Was that Arthur you called him? And of course, the law hero would be placed onto the uh, crucifix cross. He's hanging for our sins, everyone. The sins of our mother dying, basically. <laughs> Alright, so... I'm probably just gonna give these two characters points in magic and agility. And maybe another point in vitality. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Magic so that he can have a bunch of MP. Well, actually, that didn't increase his MP all that much. I am testing out to see what increases his MP. And it really seems like his MP doesn't increase all that much with magic. Which is unfortunate. How much... 
Wow, okay. So, it can literally go as high as 19. Fine, alright. That is fair. We're going to make him balance, well, very, uh, into magic and intelligence. Well, actually, no magic whatsoever, but intelligence is going to be extremely high, just for the, uh, high MP pool. We're gonna put some points in agility, and make sure that he tanks some hits with his vitality. Hello, Scar. This makes my head hurt. You know, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what you said back in the day when I first played this. <laughs> yeah, I'm basically redoing this game, uh for a special project that I'm going to be doing in the future. So I'm going to need footage of this entire game of me playing through it. So that's why I'm pretty much replaying through this game again. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, I, I'm not used to it being so fast in this version. Alright, and the demon is teabagging this guy. He's teabagging Lobo, of all people. Actually, since you're here, Scar, uh, I was naming these guys after uh, what Arsenal called them in the original playthrough, but if you want to name the Chaos Hero right here, you can. I'm up, to, I'm up for suggestions, basically. So it's like a big edit of you during, doing and stuff? Uh, sort of. Sort of. But yeah, if you have a name for um, the Chaos Hero, the guy who will be mostly aligned with demons, uh, I'm, I'm all for it. If not, I can just name him Lobo. This is technically a different version than the one I played back in the day. Uh, what I played was the SNES version, and this is the recently fan-translated GBA port, which has a lot more bells and whistles than the SNES version. Um, most of it is better because they managed to actually fix most of the problems that I had in the original game. Uh, it comes with its own fair share of issues though, like the music. <laughs> Krusty, I couldn't set it better than myself, <laughs> or better myself. The music is indeed very crusty. Revenant, alright, but that sounds a lot like Revan. <laughs> Jackie, that's a better name, thank you. Also, I don't think I could fit Revenant. <laughs> Cookies? I mean, you, you you said so many options, so I'm just gonna go with the one that sounds the most silly. His name will forever be Cookies. Actually, how how many? Oh yeah, you you could barely uh fit enough to actually make Revenant. Uh, but yeah. There we go. His name will henceforth be Cookies. <laughs> Thank you, Scar. Did I hear you call him Cookies? The Cookies has yet late that. The Cookie has the Cookie yet has latent powers. Oh my. All right, so we're going to make this giant Cookie really good at magic. Decent in vitality, at least 10 in agility. And what will increase his MP? Okay. So we'll need at least seven there. That should do it. Also, no demons. Why would you torture yourself like this? Because I like to. <laughs> I'm playing Persona 3 on hard mode. I, um... What other challenges am I doing in other games? <laughs> Cookie, why did you wake me up? And I was having such a good dream, too. I was dreaming about me being covered in milk and being eaten by a giant blue muppet. You better leave me out of, out of here, den. Cookie joined your party. I am uh, totally going to use that for the video. <laughs> I don't know what other challenge videos I am, or challenge games that I'm, I'm doing recently. Oh, I, I'm currently playing through SMT5 on hard mode. My first playthrough on hard mode. <laughs> And it's actually quite exhilarating. It's really fun. My name is Yuriko. Ah, oh, Yuriko. You're a very sad character, in my opinion. It doesn't really get much uh, development, but hey, not many, people, many, not many characters get development in this particular game. <laughs> oh yeah, our character is technically still in school in this game.
I always forget that. Well, the room is definitely a much bigger improvement than the original version. In the original game, it was literally just the desk and the computer <laughs> that was in this room. They actually added a bed and clothing and desks. A TV, I think. I think that's a TV on the desk to the left. If not, then the giant uh, painting on the wall is probably a TV. And again, this is like the 1990s, so... Uh, flat screen televisions probably weren't a thing back then. I mean, I know they weren't a thing back then. Yes, and we're getting a... Oh yeah, and a window. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, I'm so used to the original game just having barely anything put into the backgrounds. So yeah, we're getting a notice from Steven, and he's sending us a file which contains the demon summoning program, which we will eventually use to become devil summoners and protect ourselves from the inevitable end of days. Mogram, aren't you up yet? Come in! <laughs> oh god, the music. Yeah, some tracks ended up surviving the transition to the GBA. Um... Not a lot of them, though. <laughs> there are unfortunately some tracks that didn't quite make the cut. Alright, so this is basically the same thing, isn't it? Menic's program isn't quite complete yet. The e-manual I'm sending to, for the Demon Summoning program should explain how to use it. Alright, so we're getting a manual! program allows you to talk and negotiate with demons, which we will not use whatsoever. Well, the negotiating part we might use. If a demon seeks your input, respond by selecting one of two given options. If we end up getting a demon by a happen chance, uh, I will let it go. Because I don't want any demons. <laughs> I don't like demons. I am a law boy and I will take any angels, even though they technically also count as demons. <laughs> yeah, so apparently there's a lot of crime happening in our t little town of Kichijoji. Also, our mother just gave us $100. <laughs> it is $100. That is the, uh... That is the closest to yen that that can translate to. Hi, Angie B. This is Cookie. Welcome... To the cookie magic world. Don't let your guard down, Mogram, and make sure you're not out late. <laughs> make sure to not be, uh, uh, what's, what's, what's the phrase? Make sure you're not taken over by demons. I forgot. But hey, let's forget about all our worries because Pascal is here. It's Pascal the Dugu. It's Doug too. Oh, he doesn't say Bow Wow in this version. Wolf Bark Arf. That's not nearly as funny. The song is good, though. Like, the song is pretty much okay in this version as well. Yeah, if it's if it's no if it's uh if you haven't caught on yet, they are using the iOS uh s translated script for this version of the game. So, all the dialogue here is from the iOS version, which is the first version that I actually played. Oh god, what did they do to this song? <laughs> I don't- I don't like... I don't like the instruments that they have for this. It's so wonky, I don't like it! <laughs> what do you want? Don't come near me! Oh wow, we already got here. Don't come any closer, I have a knife! I actually wasn't looking for you, I was looking for the club, but, uh, okay. Ghost Prada appears. The Prada pounces at you. The Prada ran away. We've seen an attack knife on the ground. In the, uh, SNES fan translation, they hype that scene up to be, uh, a little bit more gruesome. Where the Prada actually skins the, uh, guy's skin out. And basically, you get the attack knife from the guy's corpse. Can I open the main menu at all? Oh, okay, it's the uh, confirm button. Okay. Uh, but in this version, it's kind of implied that he just ran away and we got the knife from uh, him dropping it. <laughs> if 
futons are surprisingly comfortable or at least preferable to sleep on the floor. Yeah, that's why they use them all the time in Japan. Why they're pretty much okay with futons. <laughs> don't don't tell me what to do, random stranger. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> do you hear there was a murder in the park? Oh, that explains all the noise that was happening that night. I'm stupid, I didn't read the title. Yeah, you also didn't read the description. <laughs> oh no, one of our classmates had died. And lo and behold, we meet Yuriko outside of our dreams. Running into you here. <laughs> she certainly isn't a creepy dame. There's no one- Oh! She, she's gone. Oh, I never actually bothered uh, going back to that spot after I talked to her. She just appears one second and then she disappears the next. Like, like, like nothing. <laughs> You're here for your usual coffee beans, right? I have them sent to your house. You can wait to pay. I don't like this song either. They kind of ruined- they kind of ruined those notes! They are way too high for this song! Yeah, I- I- ugh. I'm probably gonna say that a lot about some of the songs in this game. If they ruined the boss battle theme, my, one of my favorite songs in this game, I'm going to be severely disappointed. What do you want? Get out of here. <laughs> uh, I don't like this one. <laughs> We're definitely going to be buying 10 medicines, because we will need them. Alright, the uh, message speed is a little too slow for my liking, so we're going to be changing that. <laughs> I thought it would be fine, but no thank you. Message speed, battle message speed. We'll keep the battle message speed on normal for now, just to test and see how fast it actually is. Okay, that is much better. Instant. <laughs> I like that. We'll ha we have goods that will help you survive the inevitable apocalypse. How do you know, good sir? <laughs> Turns out he's like, he's just like the uh, shop owners in the Devil Summoner games. They're just in on the whole Devil Summoner thing. <laughs> Definitely gonna get a hunter's vest. And plain boots. Okay, that part of the song wasn't all that bad. Someone may say that it was a bad idea to spend all that money on all that stuff, but I don't care. Oh, hey, Ozawa. He's going to be important later. And by important, I mean a very small-time NPC character that will fight at least twice. And then he dies. <laughs> Uh, the characters in this game. They're definitely interesting for the time, but man, are they pretty one-dimensional. <laughs> I still miss him saying bow well. <laughs> oh well. Shut up, this song sounds good. Not as good as the SNES version, Scar, or the PS1 version, which I uh, really love the PSP... PS1 version soundtracks. A girl was killed in Inogashira Park. It's becoming a dangerous world out there. You know, I'll say. Random demons attacking me. People showing them knives. Shop owners selling stuff for the inevitable apocalypse. I'm surprised you haven't noticed any of this, mother. Night, Bogram. <laughs> Plot twist has only been like... A few minutes since we woke up. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Rosewolf in chat. Sorry for being late. I never repeat, never knew there was a GBA version of this game. Yeah, uh, it, there has been a GBA version, and just recently they uh, finished a fan translation of the GBA version. So now we're able to play this version. So yay. And it has... Look at this. We're going so fast. <laughs> I'm still surprised by the fact that we're just going so fast in these dream sequences. I'm always by your side, except for the time when I left you in, in mythology. My bad. 
A disturbing ritual is underway. What the hell are all these people doing? Are they trying to summon a demon? No, they're trying to sacrifice that woman. Oh, apparently they are. <laughs> apparently they are trying to summon a demon. The girl's being sacrificed. Will you save the girl? Hmm. I mean, why not? This is a dream, after all. Hey, the guys in the back has a sword, and we got nothing. You're nuts. No, I don't. I have this knife that I got in the real world. <laughs> Who dares meddle in the ritual? Alright, uh, so in the original playthrough, I named this girl Snow uh, for uh, Arsenal's request. Uh, if anyone else has a name for the heroine, I'll definitely take it. If not, I'll just uh, name her Snow again. <laughs> I never listened to the OG songs, but I'm not picky. Scar, you watched me play the original version. You know exactly what they sound like. <laughs> The SNES version is known for its funky bass line, something the GBA can't really do. Uh, I prefer the PS1's funky bass lines uh, to, the, to the SNES version, especially with the boss battle theme. The boss battle theme in the PS1 version is absolutely nuts, and I love it. <laughs> My favorite uh, rendition of it is the PS1 version because it has that funky bass line. To be fair, a lot of shops in America had Y2K advertising, saying their products were compliant for the upcoming Y2K disaster. I mean, that sounds believable, because you want to monopolize on whatever the current craze is, and the craze at the time was, I guess, Y2K, so. It's a good business practice, a little bit scummy, but it, it actually works. <laughs> I probably will just go with Snow. I mean, I was a fan of uh, calling her Snow in the original version as well. I'll give everyone a minute, though. Just so I can drink my water real quick. <sighs> Alright, Snow it is. What? This girl's name is Snow? Actually... Quick, call my name! I kind of want to go with the joke name. Just because... We're gonna take... There's a reason. There is a reason why. For those of you who have seen the original game, you know why I will want to take the piss out of this. So, uh... Hmm... What is a very good joke name? I mean, I could be juvenile and just name her after a genitalia uh, member, like a uh, penis, pussy. Uh, but I want to be a little bit more sophisticated than that. So I'm going to take a book out of Revan's page. Just call her Fita. Fita with a female, not female. Not, that, that's not female. That's a male. Female sign. <laughs> For those of you that know Norwegian, you know exactly why I'm calling her this. Also, do not look up this name. <laughs> Th that name, it's... Uh... Apparently, they don't like women. <laughs> Thank you, Malgren. They nearly sacrificed my feet. If the ritual had finished, it would have summoned a fearsome archdemon. Why am I getting flashbacks to the original uh, Digital Devil Story anime? Alright, so our heroine of the game. Let's uh, distribute her stat points. So just like my last playthrough, I'm going to go with a full luck build for both my hero and heroine near the end of the game. But in order to survive early game, I'm going to want to give her as much stats points into the most important stats as possible. A as quick as possible. So maybe a bit in magic, put another in intelligence, and her agility is good for the early game. Vitality is fine, it'll allow her to survive multiple hits, so the rest can go into strength. We're getting an early start with the strength luck build. <laughs> we won't meet for some time, and then we won't meet again for another, another long time. 
Bogram, aren't you up yet? It's because you're off school. Yeah, yeah, we know, mother. <laughs> Get off my back, woman. I've completed my auto-mapping program. Oh, sweet. If I remember correctly, they didn't actually have the auto-map in the original version of the SNES game. So you would actually have to uh, download a mod in order to use the auto-map. Which is a godsend to have. <laughs> I don't think I would have been able to play the original version of the game without the auto map. <laughs> you were tossing and turning. You even called someone's name. Sound like a girl's name. Was it feet? Uh, mother? I don't think that's an actual name. <laughs> and then we just remove all the uh, Norwegian translation books from the house. <laughs> don't let your guard down. Have you played Doom, Mr. Rosewolf? I'm playing Doom 3. In my opinion, it's the scariest in the series. Note, Doom is always about ripping and tearing your enemies. That I do know. You should see the bathroom scene. I have not played any of the Doom games, but I have seen uh, multiple Let's Plays of Doom... of the recent Doom games. Doom Eternal and the Doom game that was before that. I don't know the actual title of the one before that because... Uh, I don't think it actually had a title, it was just... Doom. <laughs> Alright, so our neighbor is a doctor, and our mother mentioned that our next door neighbor's name is also Fite, with a female symbol. Oh, Mulgrim, what's the matter? Huh? A dream? I don't remember having any dream. I had a date set for today, but I won't be going anywhere now thanks to the police. Screw the police. <laughs> Who? Who with? What does it matter to you who I date? I mean, fair. <laughs> oh, Spirit, I need to buy a new controller. I kind of rage and threw my controller and the trigger... F oh, no! <laughs> Apex Legends? You know what? That's fair. That game seems... very easy to rage on. <laughs> Alright, so this guy. Apparently, this is, um, it's not Enno Ozuno, it's another name that is very difficult to pronounce, but he's essentially the neutral, uh, representator. Or representator. You meet him in the, uh, neutral ending, which I didn't get in the original version, and, I don't, and I've, I've never gotten the neutral ending. So, apparently, he appears, like, at the beginning of the game, and then he appears again at the ending. Sounds about right for Shin Megami Tensei characters. <laughs> Seriously, I'm dreaming in the middle of the day? <laughs> I just like how no-nonsense Cookie is. Or Cookies, sorry. Yeah, if he was just Cookie in, uh, non-plural, he would be like, uh... Oh! He would be Simon Nelson Cook! <laughs> Now I kind of wish I didn't put the S at the end of his name. Now we could have, because then we would have had Simon Nelson Cook in our party, and I would love to go on an adventure with Cookie. Don't go, Mogram. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to go out there. Take this. <laughs> to this day, I don't know why we uh, saw our mother in that uh, in this dream. Also, I notice that the uh, priestess or our priest. Um, that are waving their uh, go gohes. Um, they have more frames in their animations. <laughs> They're actually waving them like they actually would. <laughs> that is surprising. Waltzing in here like this. Yeah, so apparently this guy is a demon. No spirit, he is mine. Too late! Oh no. The boss battle theme. Okay, I want to hear the bass real quick. I want to see how it sounds like. Or hear how it sounds like. Okay. Okay. Oh. Alrighty. I can dig it. <laughs> okay, it's not that bad. I think they did it justice. Wait, he has guns? Oh, right, they, they, they start out with guns. I forgot about that. 
Slash with their sword. Oh god, we're definitely gonna have to increase the speed. Cookie, really? You have glasses on. Margram died. Welp. Seems you cannot handle this yet. It's almost like you sent us into a boss battle when we haven't even gotten any encounters yet. To increase our experience. <laughs> Spirit cookie is me. Oh, I probably shouldn't go in here. There might actually be encounters in there. Well, there's certainly encounters right now, since the um, bar on top of Kijijoji is yellow. Hold it right there, you must be Mugrim. So why did the uh, police arrest us for being Mugrim? I actually have no idea. Eh, the law, the law theme is okay. Oh, are you? Are you Mugrim? It wasn't just a dream. It's me, Arthur. Do you remember me? I'm kind of giving him like a Southern Belle kind of voice. Margrim, you have to listen to me. My girlfriend's gone missing. I tried to find her, but woe is me. I was attacked by demons. Oh, what a world. Oh, pity. <laughs> I need to hurry up and find my girlfriend. Yeah, sure, whatever, dude. <laughs> oh my god, Misty Classified is something I was expecting to re I was not expecting to remember today. Yes, finally! Someone who actually gets the references to that show that I say. <laughs> I am surrounded by people that never watch that show. And it always made me sad that no one ever got my references to them. <laughs> Your feet is neighbor. Margaret, you lived right next door to her. Well, anyway. <laughs> well, anyways. <laughs> I like that. It's like, oh, what a coincidence that you're the next door neighbor of my girlfriend that we never met. Well, anyways, <laughs> let's continue on. It's time for the surgery. Get out. Arthur leaped at the worker. Okay, Arthur is kind of badass in the early game. Not gonna lie. <laughs> He's definitely much better than Cookie. I mean, no one is better than Cookie. <laughs> he was like the most, uh, the most entertaining character in the show. <laughs> but you know what I mean. I thought I was arrested. Why did they put me in a hospital? Ah, here he is. Steven! You have the program I made. Has it been used? I'm not gonna do this again. <laughs> I'm not going to voice Steven again, especially, uh, rest in peace Stephen Hawking, especially since he's no longer with us. Actually, I think I played this game after, uh, Stephen Hawking passed away, so I have no excuse for doing that very bad uh, impersonation of him in the first playthrough. So yeah, it's because of Steven uh, experiment with an, experimenting with a interdimensional uh, device that caused all the demons to pour out of the expanse and travel into our world. So now the demons are overflowing in Tokyo and eventually they will inhabit the entire world. Apparently it's also the explanation for why Steven is in a wheelchair because he was uh, badly injured during the a uh, horrible experiment gone wrong. Yeah, he's also the one who created the terminal. So I'm disseminating my program to people. The more people who can control demons, the better. Hopefully that will keep them from running rampant. Alas, the program seems rather difficult to master. Do you understand all that I've said? Yes, I have. Allow me to give you this program. It allows you to analyze and record data on demons. It's a shame I won't be needing it, Steven. <laughs> Watch out. If he stands, you're screwed. If he stands, we're all screwed. Yes, all of us included. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to save here just in case. Why, thank you, Steven. Alright, so we're both level one. And this is technically the actual start of the game. This will be our first dungeon and uh, no demons. Oh boy. Let's see if we can actually do this. The director is doing terrible experiments. I think he's trying to make an invincible soldier. Oh, he's trying to make a super soldier. Okay, well we gotta stop him from making Captain America, or else he's gonna sell it to the Americans. Those horrible Americans. <laughs> 
I can say that in this game because they are horrible. <laughs> Battle theme is okay. Considering we don't have much choices in our uh, combat efficiency, we'll just do um, auto battle. Hey, first level up. All right. I think I'm going to invest that point in strength. Get it to a perfect 10 right there. As for you, Arthur, I want you to be as fast as possible. You are eventually going to be our healer, after all. I need to watch the show. Good luck with that, Scar. It's pretty old, and, uh... I don't think you can find it through normal means these days. <laughs> it's because you had the knife that was dropped when the Prada killed that dude. Oh! Well, I thought... He, I thought the Prada killing that dude was only in the SNES fan translation. Because it wasn't implied that he killed the dude in, uh, in this version. Although I could just be misremembering. Oh yeah, I forgot Arthur is pretty much equipped with a bunch of really good gear. Including a Beretta, of all things. This is going upstairs, right? <laughs> nah. Not yet, I want to explore a little bit more. Is this a game you bought a few months ago? Yes, it is. Ooh! Speaking of Paredes... Yeah, I bought the uh, physical copy of this game, and uh, I figured since I'm going to do... Ooh, a Tomfa. Since I'm going to do a review of this game eventually, I want to have not only... Uh, uh, not only do I want to have uh, experience with the game beforehand, you know, uh, recent experience. I also need uh, footage for it, because my old playthrough, the footage isn't necessarily all that good, so yeah. That's the reason why we're replaying this game. Arthur, are you gonna put that into vitality just to make yourself survive more hits? Well, that was a whole lot of nothing. Wait, wait, wait. What kind of noise is that? Kind of sounds like the noises in Super Mario whenever he, uh... It just sounds like a Super Mario noise. <laughs> I'm trying to remember where I've heard that noise before. Hey, Knocker! It's a shame I can't have you in my party. Eight damage. Actually, I wonder if the Tonfa is better than the uh, knife that we have on Mogram at the moment. I didn't actually check. Okay, so it's attack 6, accuracy 2, and it hits 2 times. Okay, yeah, that is way better than the uh, knife. <laughs> Arthur has a machete, though. Oh, but it only hits once. Okay, so if we get another Tonfa, I'm definitely giving that to, to Arthur. It's definitely worth it, apparently. Pixie! I don't care about you. <laughs> Some people may call you waifu, I just say fusion fodder. <laughs> or in the context of this playthrough, did. Oh yeah, um, spirits, uh... Oh, or ghosts, or just spirits in general. They don't take damage from guns, so that's unfortunate. Alright, Mugrim. Gonna raise your vitality a little bit more. Early game, we really need to prioritize our survivability. More so than uh, straight-up damage. Because we're going to be facing a lot of battles where it will just be uh, Mogram alone at a certain point. You know which point I'm talking about, people. So I want to prepare myself before I get to that portion of the game. God, that portion of the game. Zombie! An actual zombie! Am 
right now I'm just getting as much uh, experience as I possibly can in the first floors. You know, I completely forgot that Were Dog is an actual demon. They never do bring him back. They eventually bring back the werewolf in SMT5 with a completely different name, but uh Were Dog, not so much. Also, Kobold. Kobold is rarely seen in most SMT games these days. Okay, don't make this. Don't make the mistake of pressing no. <laughs> I've done that multiple times before, and it's not fun to reset your game and uh, go back all the way to the point where you saved. <laughs> Therian. Actually, not only has Were Dog never appeared again, uh, the Therian race also never has either. I don't recognize that one. We'll go with Vitality. More Vitality! More! Learned a new spell. Can we actually see what spells Arthur has? Well, he has Dia and Mapper, so that's actually not bad at all. In fact, Mapper would probably be very useful in this dungeon, but it's not a very long one, so... I'm fine with not using it. I'm sorry, Will Smith, but you will have to have the surgery. The lock has been disconaged. D disconaged? <laughs> Okay, well, I don't know what disconaged is, but the lock has been disengaged, so we can go in there now. But first, I want to go through this room. Nice. Oh, it's a good thing I actually came in here. Strength and sense! Well, I definitely know who I'm going to be using that on. As a quick note to anyone who plans on playing this game, uh, never use your incenses on the Law Hero and Chaos Hero. Basically, only use them on your main character and the heroine. Since they will stay with you throughout the entire game, it's best to just uh, focus on them specifically. Have you gone through your modifications yet? Uh, no. Why would we go through those, you wimp? I see that you're still wicked humans that won't obey my command. You must obey. Must obey! Now, why would we obey a guy who brings his horse inside? That is just stupid. Also, apparently he's a furry. He has like a giant lion head. And I think he's also in armor, too. <laughs> this is a very weird boss. Sword, and what magic do we have? Ah, Zon. Okay. 11 damage? That wasn't as much as I thought it would be. Actually, now that I think about it, the magic stat is what increases magic damage, not intelligence. Oh, I screwed up with Arthur. Okay, well, I definitely made a big mistake at the beginning of the game, but you know what? <laughs> I think we can make it past it. I think we can, we'll be just fine. <laughs> oh, they have this uh, portion of the song in this version. Yeah, this portion of the song was added in Shimagami Tensei Ips rendition of the boss battle theme. Also, it's like full of uh, bass tapping goodness. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? They did okay with the boss battle theme in this in this port. Well, Arthur, it looks like you're relegated to healing duty. It's a shame as well. I was hoping that I would make use of his high magic damage, but uh, sort of screwed up there. <laughs> Curses! Oh, right, we, we hit twice. <laughs> now, if he was able to hit twice, that would be a different story. <laughs> I 
Hulinpa. Oh, Margaret's gone into a fury. Is that basically just Berserk? If that's the case, then you kind of... You, you kind of, uh... You kind of wrote your own grave there, Arias. <laughs> you pull limp the guy who can only do physical attacks. Well, it was an easy battle nonetheless. So, we're gonna put that point into strength. And as for you, Arthur... We're going to do what we should have done at the beginning and increase your magic stat. <laughs> I was prioritizing intelligence because it increased the MP a lot more than the magic stat did. I had a reason to do it. <laughs> it apparently wasn't a very good reason, but it was a reason nonetheless. Well, since this is a no demon run, we don't have to worry about running out of uh, mock or magnetite. Oh, wait, auto. My bad. Yeah, so we can technically just spend all our money on shops and healing and never worry about saving them for demons. Or we could talk to demons in order to get more currency. That's always a plus. We don't necessarily have to get them in our party, just talk to them and uh, get more maka so we can use that shops. <laughs> Either way, it's a win-win. Alright, so we go back to the mall, and we head into the room where Ozawa was in. And we find Simon Nelson Cook on the floor. <laughs> hey, he actually has glasses! <laughs> it makes sense! Hey guys, let's beat this guy's ass! A gang has cornered a young man and is beating him. So cruel. I can't allow it. Hey, what do you think you're do- I apparently turned him into Nate. <laughs> Stop that right now, you awful, awful man. <laughs> Damn, somebody's coming. You better not think you can pull a fast one on me. Wow, Zawa has a much deeper voice than I th remembered. Never. And that's the setup for his entire character arc. Shut up, do I look alright to you? If only I had power, then I'd... Still talking like that. Yeah, so apparently this is Cookie. I do like his drip, though. His jacket, I've always been a fan of it. It's, um... For some reason, in the game, they portray it as just a striped jacket with uh, blue stripes. In the official artwork, it's uh, camo. It's camouflage. It's gray camouflage, which really fits his uh, overall aesthetic. It's like, you saved me. Kazuma Kaneko really knows how to design characters. Characters and demons. <laughs> how am I supposed to beat demons if I can't even fight Ozawa? Please let me join you. I'm coming whether you like it or not. Cookie has joined your party, whether you like it or not. <laughs> You know what missed opportunity? Biggest missed opportunity here. I should have named Arthur, uh... Ned. <laughs> and the heroine, uh... No, 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 no. I should have named Mogram Ned. And I should have named the heroine, uh... Oh god, what was her name? What was the female character's name in that show? Jennifer? It was Jennifer, but what was her, um, nickname? Mosby? No, that's something else. Mosley! Mosley! That's it! I should have named her Mosley. <laughs> Just to fit with the whole reference. <laughs> but then what would I have named Arthur? Uh... <laughs> Coconut Head. <laughs> you know what? His hair kind of looks like that, so... It would fit, honestly. Alright, so we don't have much money, but I want to check out the antique store. I guarantee that quality. 
Hey, so this version of the game does have the guns available to you. Yeah, so in the SNES version, um, there was a bug with the fan translation where this guy wouldn't be able to sell you any guns whatsoever. So you would basically go through the entire beginning of the game portion, uh, entire beginning of the game without any guns whatsoever besides the guns that your other characters have. If you wanted to use guns with Mogrim, well, uh, you're out of luck. <laughs> the MP5 submachine gun is really good, but we don't have enough money for that. I'm gonna want to save up for that particular gun. It'll be really useful in the future. Especially during the Kongo Kai section. I'm gonna need all the help I can get during that section. Ugh. Oh, Pascal! No Bow Wow, I am ashamed of you, boy! I say that as I'm looking at my dog who is sleeping right next to me. How are you, doggy? How are you? <laughs> He's just like barely moving. <laughs> Welcome home, Mogrim! Oh, yeah, this part. At least you're back safe now. I'm so glad. Come and give your mother a kiss. Mm. I can imagine just her doing that face. <laughs> What's wrong? Why won't you come to me? Oh, yeah, didn't I give her, like, a chain smoker voice in the original playthrough? Yeah, I'm totally not going to do that now. <laughs> that will ruin my voice. You know I love you, no matter what. Come here, my darling. Mother, that's not that type of anime. <laughs> something strange. Yeah, there's definitely something fishy about this. Looks like I couldn't fool you. I've already eaten your mother, but don't be sad. <laughs> it's about the same energy as the SNES version of Arthur saying, Try not to feel too bad right after this section. You'll see her again soon. In my stomach, that is. <laughs> but first, let's see how deliciously you struggle. Amano Jaku. Isn't that like Amano Jaku? <laughs> I like how they had to abbreviate it. Uh, isn't that like the name of um a type of yokai? I believe that's type of Oni, which, uh, which uh, makes sense because this thing has a horn. Alright, let's see how much magic damage we can do with Arthur here. And, uh, Agi! Tarunda. 14. 11. Alright, well that's like 10 damage with sword. Let's see how much damage Arthur can do with his gun and Cookie can do with his gun. Four. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, guns aren't nearly as useful unless you have um, ones that can do multiple hits or have very special bullets that can inflict status effects. <laughs> Curses! If I remember correctly, wow, that was pathetic. If I remember correctly, this thing has uh, status effects in its kit. So if he somehow does status effects to us that uh, completely negate our entire party, uh, that's going to be a huge problem. <gasps> One damage. Oh my god. Yeah, Makajama. If our healer, if our healer gets hit with Makajama, then we're basically fucked. <laughs> Okay, well, this is definitely an annoying boss battle. Hmm, at least he can't decrease magic damage. He is doing a significant amount of damage to Cookie, though. I'll we'll have to fix that. Barely an hour in, and we're already at the second boss battle. 
Uh, we're definitely going a lot faster than we were in... Arthur, why did it take you so long to cast Dia? We're <laughs> certainly going, um, a lot faster than, uh, my original playthrough. So that's good to see. Alright, we can't use Augie anymore, so... Our guns technically have fixed damage. So we'll just use... Or oh, never mind! <laughs> Alright, there goes the Manojaku. Hooray! We leveled up by killing our mother's killer! Yay! <laughs> Mogram just does the Kermit dance. <laughs> Is it wrong to ask for fan art of that? <laughs> Probably, but man, I would want something uh, of that. Well, increase... Ooh, he leveled up twice! Well, definitely increasing that agility right there. Okay, continue with the magic stat. And Arthur, you leveled up six times because you were at level one. <laughs> so we're going to be increasing your magic stat all the way up. Cookie has learned a new spell. <laughs> I doubt there's anything I could say that would help now, but... Alright, I want to see what this line is in the iOS version. Don't be too hard on yourself. This wasn't your fault. Okay, it's much better than the uh, SNES translated line, which is, try not to feel too bad. <laughs> yes, Arthur, telling us try not to feel too bad after we witnessed, uh, after we learned that our mother was killed off by a demon. <laughs> Give it a rest, Arthur, let this guy alone. L let the guy alone. His mom just died. And, uh, Cookie still being the voice of reason somehow. Pascal the dog jumped in. He wanted to say bow wow. And that is all. And then he jumps out. <laughs> Take him with you? Yeah, sure. Bark oof! Alright, we got Pascal the doggo. Bloody apron. Mogram went to sleep. Yes, because after learning that our mother has been killed, uh, I can definitely go back to sleep with no problems whatsoever. There are several things I should warn you about. Yada, yada, yada. Are you not giving us any more programs? Okay. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> bark, bark. Bow wow. Oh! I completely forgot that it, there was a treasure here. Malgram gave up opening on the treasure chest. Okay, so I don't remember if full moon chests are a thing in this game. Uh, so I'm going to test that out right now by making a save state right here. It is currently a new moon. We open it and we get a gnarled ball. Oh, okay, wait, I, I think that's like an event item. So, yeah, that's actually nothing. <laughs> Although we do get Pascal's theme whenever we go to this corner. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah, I'll explain the event items later, but uh, they are technically important for a new addition to this game, or to this port. A terrible murder was arrested here. Yes, a very, very naughty murderer. <laughs> Who escaped prison? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this song either. <laughs> Although they did lower the pitch on the wailings in the background, so you know what? That's a plus for me. <laughs> 400 mag. Nice. Okay, I kind of actually like this rendition of the th song a lot more. Alright, so this is where we can heal if you want neutral points. And a medicine. Not bad, not bad. Huh, so there are actually no encounters in this place. Jacques, 
otherwise known as the Cathedral of Shadows. Oh, they do actually call it the Cathedral of Shadows in this version. Jakyo, I believe, is the Japanese uh, name for it, but uh, yeah. What do they call it in the SNES version? Realm of Shadows? I, I know it wasn't a cathedral, because for some reason, someone decided to translate... Well, it wasn't someone, I think it was uh, Aeon Genesis. Aeon Genesis decided to translate the um, name of the final dungeon as the cathedral, even though it's supposed to be the Basilica, which made it very confusing back in the day for people to like think wait this is the cathedral i thought the cathedral of shadows was supposed to be the cathedral uh, i forgot to uh set up our auto battle again there we go i want everyone to use the guns besides Mogram, because he actually has a decent sword there we go guns are pretty broken a cookie. Yeah, more points in magic, please. Oh, right, there's an elevator here. Eh, we're gonna take the normal routes. First, I want to explore this entire building. There's going to be a boss battle at the end of this. And I'm not sure if we can, uh, if, if it'll be easy, considering I always have Cerberus for that particular battle. But we'll try our hardest. We'll definitely have to level up as much as possible, though. <laughs> so let's just take the time to level up here for a bit. Those gremlins never come back either. Which is sad, because I actually do like the gremlin design in this game. It's simplistic, yet it also kind of... Oh, kobolds as well. <laughs> They're simplistic, but it also kind of reminds me of those new uh, flying daemons that were added in Shin Megami Tensei V. Might have had a bit of inspiration, I don't know. Like, they have wings, they look like... Actually, they kind of look like a mixture of the Daemons and Incubus. And, uh, something I don't really want to say, considering I'm not really a big fan of Incubus' design for uh, obvious reasons. Actually, looking at the Gremlin's design, it, it's also uh, using its hands to cover its crotch, so... Uh, I, I, I can't unthink that now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Now, now the thought of the gremlin having the <laughs> incubus's defining feature is now stuck in my head, <laughs> and I don't want it there. Get out! <laughs> I have much better things to have in my mind, like uh, extensive knowledge of Persona 2. And, uh, that's it. <laughs> that's all that's really on my mind. Andres. This, however, is a demon that has made its return. It actually ended up getting a 3D model in uh, SMT5, and it looks amazing in that game. Always been a big fan of Andres. And not just because he's a giant buff chicken. Naked chicken as well. Alright, uh, Mogrim. We'll put that point into Vitality again. Eventually, we'll have to focus on the luck build, because, uh, I want to do that as soon as possible. But for now, our survivability is more important. <laughs> One thing that I learned in Shin Megami Tensei If was that if Tamaki managed to get nine of a certain gem type, then it would inc it would it permanently increase her stats as long as she had nine of those gems with her at all times. And I don't remember if it's in this game as well. Like uh, collecting like nine amethysts will increase. Uh, for example, your luck up to three points. 
I don't know if that feature is in this game or if it started in SMT2 slash SMT if. I believe it started in SMT2. Or that it is an SMT2, but uh, it, it's been a while since I've looked up stuff for those games. I eventually want to play SMT2, but uh, I won't play it until I finish the uh, eventual review that I'm making for this game. As well as a couple of other things that I'm planning to do for that game. Uh, for instance, I'm tr going to try to make like a small little animation for that game whenever I play it which has been on my mind ever since I uh, wanted to, you know, let's play SMT games. I have a bit of an animation idea for that game, and I've been wanting to finish it for the longest time, but motivation, it is a fickled bee. <laughs> Cookie, I think you have enough points in magic now. Let's uh, go back to vitality. I think the highest I will want our vitality stats to be for this game is probably 20. 20 is probably the highest amount. At that point, not much will be able to penetrate our defenses. I could have made a very interesting joke there, but I stopped myself. <laughs> Ooh, we got a Molotov! Ooh, we should probably heal Arthur real quick. There we go. Also, just to note, I am not against using safe states in this game. I will not use them during a boss battle, um, because that would essentially be cheating. I can just reset the safe state in the middle of the boss battle if I end up screwing up. Um, I am okay with using a safe state before we fight a boss, though. This game is a little ar archaic, so tr uh, tracking back all the way to an actual save point is a little much. Although I will try my hardest to um, not abuse save states. Wow, that, did, did they raise their defenses or something? Because they're pretty beefy at the moment. Um, but yeah, I, I won't be abusing save states. I'm going to try to use um, the normal saves as much as possible. Just to make it at least a little more interesting. This is supposed to be a challenge run, after all. <laughs> and so far, we haven't had much in the way of challenge. Besides the obvious screw-up with Arthur's stat distribution, um... We are doing really okay so far against random battles and even the bosses. Amanazaku was kind of a joke when usually it's a pretty difficult boss. And heck, I didn't even uh, level up um, Arthur at all. Okay, I used the fast forward feature a little bit, but uh, probably a mistake there. <clears throat> at a certain point, I'll probably just have to use the fast forward feature whenever I'm fighting random battles. Oh yeah, the doctor's uh, daughter is missing, so... Fite! <laughs> no, not that Fite, the other Fite is missing. We have to find our Fite, guys. We really need the Fite today. Uh, I blame Revan for um, introducing me to that word. like calling someone a puto when they don't even know Spanish. <laughs> Which I did do <laughs> in the past a couple of times. No, actually, I used uh, puto and um, what was the other term? Pinchi gorito, I think? Yeah. Because my, my family is like half Spanish, so I... Um, adapted a couple of phrases. I never really learned to uh, speak Spanish fluently or just learn it at all because uh, little dum dum, you know. <laughs> but uh, eh. some phrases just stick with you. Lol, the only thing I know about this game is that the battle theme slaps. <laughs> 
The boss theme as well. The boss theme is also really good. Also, I never knew the GBA version had a fan translation. Is this the better way to play it? Um, yes, actually. Uh, in my personal opinion, the additions to this version are just way better. If it's possible, and it's not really possible nowadays because it's uh, taken off the market and it's really difficult to find an emulator of it, but the iOS version is, in my opinion, the best way to experience this game because it has the GBA graphics with the PS1 soundtrack. If you can know that, tell the uh, soundtrack in the GBA version that I'm playing right now is a little uh, crunchy. The sound font is not as good as the SNES version, for most of the tracks, and definitely not as good as the PS1 version. But when you're comparing this to the SNES version, many of the additions are very welcomed. Basically, most of them are just quality of life stuff, like um, the ability to de-equip stuff off of your characters, which was impossible to do in the original version, unless you had a... Uh, um, another set of equipment that you could give them, which meant uh, de-equipping any of the guns on your other characters was practically impossible in the early game. <laughs> and you kind of had to do that unless you used a mod to uh, reinstate the gun shop that was removed from the fan translation of the SNES game due to a bug. <laughs> That's another thing, the SNES version is very glitchy. Yeah, we want to increase his magic. <clears throat> The SNES version is so glitchy that the law path is virtually inaccessible unless you use a very specific uh, patch that fits. You have to use a patch that fixes another patch, basically. <laughs> if I remember correctly, it's the Ordeen patch um, that reinstates the gun shop at the beginning of the game as well as the... Uh, law route or the law path without any of those you basically can't uh use you basically can't do anything of you basically can't buy guns at the beginning of the game and you can't uh get the law ending but yeah snt1 on the gba better version definitely Sick. I want to play SMT 1 and 2 at some point. I just have no clue when I'll actually do so. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't think there are any plans to translate the GBA version of SMT 2 at all. I haven't heard anything about that. Which sucks, because there's a lot of exclusive stuff in SMT 2 GBA version that I really want to experience. It's mostly just story related, but, uh, the quality of life stuff is also still there. <clears throat> SMT2 on the SNES is also a very glitchy game, so uh, your mileage may vary whenever you try it out. <laughs> I mean, oh, that's funny. I'm surprised I never heard of this. Granted, I'm still new to SMT2, SMT as a whole. That's fair, yeah. SMT has an extensive library. Um, this game was released in 1994, so that, that pretty much tells you how uh, expansive this series is. And heck, this is this technically isn't even the first game. <laughs> what we're playing is technically speaking the third game in the entire Megami Tensei franchise as a whole. But it is probably the best place to start if you want to be as close to the beginning as possible. <laughs> But yeah, whenever you do try this series, or this game, definitely go with the GBA port. It also has the auto map feature, which is uh, this button right here, which wasn't in the SNES version. <laughs> there were a lot of things that weren't in the SNES version that you would need a patch for. The auto map, the gun shop, and the law ending are pretty much all those. Ooh, intelligence and sense. I'm going to save that for our heroine because uh, she definitely needs the intelligence more. Oh, nice. Again, we still need 25k in order to uh, buy that new Nanbu, which we desperately need before we um, finish off with the whole Tokyo section. 
Granted, it won't be for a while until we finish this entire section, but I would want to get that gun as soon as possible. We will be using the Agility Incense on Mogrim, though. Again, do not use the incenses on the other characters. Only use them on the main character and the female heroine. Those are really the only sensible options for special reasons. <laughs> Megami Tensei. Yeah, Megami Tensei was the first game, and Digital Devil Story was the novelization that inspired uh, Megami Tensei. Or, and Shin Megami Tensei as a whole. The backstory for this franchise is rather fascinating. Whenever I do those uh, SMT reviews, I'm definitely going to go into it. First, I actually got to play the games and uh, get the footage for them. <laughs> Alright, Cookie. Uh, I think you have enough magic at this point. I would want to raise your strength, but the guns are doing most of the work, so... Agility might be our best bet. And you learned a new spell again. Well, I played games in the series. I played SMT3, nice. SMT4, nice. SMT5, awesome. <laughs> and Persona 3 so far. That's that's a good extensive uh, list of games that you played. As far as I know, are all the basic games everyone has played. <laughs> yeah, if you really want to go like uh, the extra mile, like the older stuff is pretty much there. Um, such as Persona 1, 2... Shin Megami Tensei 1, 2, and If on the SNES. Um, the other spin-offs like Devil Summoner and uh, Digital Devil Saga are also big ones. Well, Digital Devil Saga is more so mainstream, similar to uh, SMT4 to, uh, SMT3 to 5 and Persona 3 to 5, but uh, it is also a really good spin-off series. <laughs> if you had the chance, before the um, 3DS eShop is closed, if you actually have a 3DS, I would recommend getting uh, Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Soul Hackers. That is one game. It is, at this moment, my favorite Megami Tensei game so far. It is incredibly good, and it carries the same feeling of the classic games, while also uh, having an, a fantastic story. Ooh, luck and sense. That means we can start the luck build. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait till we ha till we can actually implement the luck build. Oh, Yuriko's just gone. Oh, just like the beginning of the game. We uh, saw her at the cafe, and then she just dis. Oh wait, never mind. She's right here. You going on ahead? You're strong enough to take on anything, I'm sure. Yeah, whatever you say. We know who you really are, Yuriko. <laughs> we played SMT4. Alright, so this is the same guy. I, I'm i not used to the uh, shrine uh, the shrine priestess uh, waving their gohes with that many frames. It's, it's so weird to me. <laughs> it's like I'm so used to the SNES version where they just had like two frames and that's it. <laughs> I won't allow you to escape this time. Okay, so apparently it wasn't a dream. It was, uh, actually real. Alright, what's his name? Dolman? Yeah, I usually fight this guy when I have Cerberus in my party, but we're not using any demons, so... Yeah. Let's do this. Hmm, Cookie has access to Posmoody and Shibabu. That could be useful. I just hope that Shibabu actually hits. Hmm. Of course. Curses, they dodged it. Oh, he has Shibabu as well. Okay, well, maybe that won't work. <laughs> uh, no, I want to use Zon. What about Post Moody? Oh, wait, that cures poison. Not inflicts it. Yeah, so this is like the big wall at this point with our challenge run. Alas, it missed. Ooh, Miragi. 
Okay, well, it's a good thing the others have high magic defense with their, um, extensive intelligence stat. But, uh, Mogurum isn't doing so hot. I want to keep trying Shibabu. Alas, it missed. Okay, probably not a good idea. I want to play Digital Devil Saga badly, but Atlas hates re-releasing games. That is true. Also, um, do not get the PS3 ports of those games at any cost. Do not get those. Those ports are incredibly buggy. And by ports, I mean the PSN store uh, ports that you can buy off of the PS3. I bought them myself not knowing that... Um, the cutscenes had incredible lag on them, so, uh, yeah, I wasn't able to finish the Digital Devil Saga. <laughs> and it's weird because every other Shin Megami Tensei game that's available on the PS3, they're all fine. Yeah, there's a bit of lag here and there when it comes to gameplay, like whenever you fuse something in uh, any of the Raido games. But uh, in terms of ST3, Persona 2, um, any of the other Personas that are on there, yeah, they're all stable. <laughs> no, 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 wait. I want to heal Mogram real quick. I don't want him to die. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Shibabu is going to work here. At least Agi is doing a decent damage against him. It's like it's time to make use of our medicines. light status effect. Will this actually work? Oh, it actually did work! <laughs> wow! Okay, that was a lucky miss. Mogram, you're gonna go on the offense. Arthur... You're gonna do what you normally do and keep everyone alive. And Cookie, you're gonna top off your own heal. Well... He can survive some hits. He has high intelligence as well as, um, actually has high magic. He has high magic and high vitality, so he is fine. Right, isn't luck like integral in SMT1? Uh, sort of. In my playthrough, luck was the most integral stat in the game because it increased the critical hit rate as well as the drop rate of pretty much everything. So by the end of the game, I had a max luck stat on my main character and my heroine, and they ended up doing critical hits for days, which caused them to do massive amounts of damage that uh, went over the uh, 2000 or 2k threshold. And pretty much every battle near the end of the game, I basically got an item from every single one. So, a lot of people will tell you that luck is useless in SMT games. Early SMT games, it's very underrated. <laughs> Something that I had discovered when, uh... Wait, who is Mogram using that on? Oh, no, no, no. I, I mistook that. I thought we were already... We already did his turn. Um, one thing that people... Uh, or one thing that I found out in my last playthrough of this game is the heroine is actually severely underrated when it comes to a physical build. If you give the heroine a high attack and luck stat, or high strength and luck stats, she will be doing massive damage throughout the entire game, and she will basically out-damage your own main character when it comes to attacks. Even if you give your main character the best sword of the game. <laughs> because she has whip weapons, which hits more than once. Sometimes they'll hit for like eight times even. And so you'll have like eight possibilities to initiate a critical hit. You can probably tell how good that sounds, just, or you can probably tell how good that is, just from how it sounds. Oh god, he's not doing much damage. Cookie seems to be fine. Alright, we need to go on the offensive again. Let's, uh, use that Zahn. And Augie was doing a lot of damage. A lot more than Zahn ever was. Okay. 
do we have any... We have a Molotov cocktail. Hmm. Cookie has one more Augie that he can use. So... Let's hope this will be the last one that we'll need to use. Dang it. Yeah, they really expect you to have Cerberus at this point. Ouch. Oh, uh, it didn't even hit Arthur. Nice. Uh, no. We need to heal. Alright, let's see how much this Molotov can actually do. Uh, about the same as Augie. Alright, we're not gonna heal this turn, we're just gonna go on the offense. I'm curious how much Cookie's gun will do. Eight damage. We don't have anything special on it, after all. They don't give us any um, guns or bullets with uh, status effects on them. If they did, then this would have been extremely easy. We don't really need life stones, because we're not going to negotiate with any demons, so... Oh, there he is! We finished Doman! Nice! Okay, that was probably our biggest wall uh, yet. And it's only gonna get worse from here. <laughs> Once we get to the Konga Kai, the Diamond Realm, I am dreading that place. Let's see, I want to increase the luck again, but uh... Okay, so I'm going to put this point in luck. But after this, I'm going to do something a little that something that sounds a little stupid. I'm going to put like four points into our magic stack in our main character who can't use magic. The reason for that is because I want to increase his magic defense, which will be really useful for a later boss battle that we'll have to fight <laughs> in a couple of hours. I swear I remember hearing someone say that luck determines hit rate in this game specifically, but obviously I don't know how true that is. I've never heard that myself. And I did a lot of research on this game in terms of the stats. Grr, woof, woof. Oh no, Pascal! Okay, so I've never actually seen this scene before with Pascal. Because I always fuse him with Cerberus. I have... I, I, I didn't know that Pascal would be sucked up by the terminal. Huh. Do we actually meet him later on in the game? Like we would with Cerberus? Um, a plot twist. Uh, if you end up fusing your dog Pascal at the Cathedral of Shadows with a demon, he will become uh, the demon Cerberus. Which is a retroactive reference to the first Megami Tensei game. Alright, well let's re let's teleport to the research lab. We could go back to our home and heal up, but I think we'll be fine. If Cookie can level up, then he'll regain all of his MP back. Man, the baselines are so muted. Not surprising because of GBA shenanigans, but it's a shame. SNT baseline always slaps 100% yes. <laughs> If you really want to hear an amazing SMT baseline, uh, look up the SMT1 PSX boss theme. It is like bass intensified. <laughs> it is one of my favorite renditions of that particular song. Looks like another newcomer. Oh yeah, this guy thinks that we're a demon in disguise. Just like how that demon was disguising as our mother. At least in the fan translated SNES version. I'm not so sure about this version. <laughs> There's a lot of differences when it comes to the different translations. Oh, right. <laughs> no Augie. <laughs> no Augie for you. 
Yeah, the the battle theme in this version just sounds so sad. <laughs> it's like the the instrumentations just are so lackluster. Like they know they're about to die from the apocalypse, so they don't even want to bother. <laughs> I'm the type of player that likes to explore every single nook and cranny in this game. <laughs> yeah, we'll start abusing our um, fast forward feature. Ooh, we got more magnetite! Even though we don't really need magnetite because we're not gonna use demons in this game. Uh, is, I'm trying to think like, is there any other use for magnetite in this besides uh, having it for demons? And. Um, no, actually, I don't think we need Magnetite for anything else. It's not like another type of currency that we can sell at a shop. <laughs> luck step, baby! More for the luck build. <laughs> and vitality, too. Oh, Steven! <laughs> okay. I was, uh, I was expecting a treasure, but you know what, Steven? You are our greatest treasure. <laughs> this is the research lab where the terminal system was under development. But it wasn't immune to Goto's influence. So yeah, uh... By the way, have you found the demon summoning program useful so far? Yes. Are you satisfied with the number of demons you can recruit? Uh, no. Because I haven't <laughs> equipped any demons as of yet. And I never will. Is he still in there? Oh no, he's gone. Yeah, so this guy named... Go in terms of the story at the moment, there's this guy named Goto who's a part of the government. He led a uh, coup d'etat against it, however, and is using the demons for his own benefit. That is currently what we know so far. And that is also why uh, the town of Kichijoji, which was our town, was under martial law. And why no one could escape it. Uh, it sucks that I can't have you in my party, Goblin. I always like having you in my party. I don't like fighting you, though, because you raise your defense all the time. <laughs> you do give decent experience and money, though. Hey, and now we are in Sendagaya. Off-topic-ish, but Megami Tensei 2 genuinely has one of the best Nest slash Famicom OSTs I have ever heard. It's insane. I've heard, um, a couple of songs from that game. Uh, like the battle theme and the shop themes, and my god, you are, you are right. That game has a lot of amazing tracks. Hey, we're in Shinjuku! There's the, um, is that the Metropolitan Building? I think that's the Metropolitan Building. Oh god, she's- Good grief, she's naked! Oh, right, uh, guns don't affect her. Or, no, no, wait, it was swords that don't affect her. Yeah, sometimes you meet enemies like that. So, are we gonna meet- Oh, we can actually go into the building! Okay. So, are we gonna meet, uh... Hey! Well, I was about to say, are we gonna meet Yamaki and, uh... Fight against some Digimon? But no! We, we met up with best boy Jack Frost. What a surprise. The Hee-Ho Fairy himself. Oh yeah. I don't think we can do anything here yet. Yeah, this place is off limits. I mean, obviously, a building like that, like this, as important as this to the government, probably would be sanctioned off during martial law. <laughs> this, I believe, is a building we'll be coming to later, though. Yeah. That is that place is technically optional. We can go there for an optional boss battle in the um, after the next section. I've heard Explore and Deathmatch from the game. Those songs are pretty crazy. Oh, yeah! <clears throat> Deathmatch! Uh, fantastic battle theme. And Explore, the theme that that kind of sounds like uh, Utsuho's theme from Doho. <laughs> no, I guess you I guess, I guess you could reverse that. Uh, Utsuho's theme sounds like Explore. <laughs> Apparently, Zoomed really liked Shimagami Tensei. 
or just RPGs in general, because most of his songs have a similar uh, or seem to be referencing past JRPGs that he might have played in the in his youth. Megami Tensei 2 with uh, Explorer, and one of the uh, Toho 2 themes is essentially just a parody of Final Fantasy VI's boss theme. <laughs> I think it was the stage where you fight Marissa in. Kuyaku Megami Tensei Artemis' wild design puts that zombie lead to shit. <laughs> What's sad is that I know what you're talking about, and my god, why does she need those many features? <laughs> oh yeah, the Lucifer Fanatics. The Ring of Gaia. I forgot they just name-dropped Lucifer this early in the game. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a big staple in this series, the uh, Ring of Gaia, and we'll eventually meet the Messiahns as well. Recently been kidnapping girls. Oshichi. Oh, wait, yeah, she's one of those demons that can't be affected by guns. Well, at least we're only using one gun with them. Oshichi is also one of those demons that are really difficult to get in negotiations. To this day, I've never actually gotten Oshichi and even Fuxi, another demon that's similar to her, um, at all through negotiations. Even when I was abusing safe states, like, they would never join my party no matter what. <laughs> I think it's like physically impossible for them to. Probably because they're one of those races where uh, you can't actually use in the game. They have a couple of them. Like some of the robotic races, uh, ro robotic uh, enemies that we'll fight later on. Funnily enough, you can actually get the humanoid Gaians and Messiahns in your party. And they actually have a special feature when it comes to fusions. I forgot how big this... Uh mall really was. I wouldn't be surprised, Zune takes inspiration from literally everything. <laughs> and considering he's like an indie artist, or an, an, an indie developer... <clears throat> oh, Body Konyan. There's nothing wrong with that. Was the song remixed in... Oh my god! Okay. These guys, th these uh, Body Konyans are doing a lot of damage to us. Um, to answer your question, yes it was. <laughs> but, uh, okay, maybe we shouldn't have come over here. It allows you to escape. <clears throat> I am going to, uh, use a smoke bomb. Because, my goodness, I did not expect to be bombarded by demons that can probably kill us in the next, uh, turn. <laughs> Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. Well, let's not go up here. <laughs> At least until we've gained uh, better equipment. Yeah, I think this song was remixed for the Ginza section in that game. This song has been remixed a lot in uh, SMT games. I believe there's a rendition of it in SMT4. Um... The bass line is basically reused in a lot of SMT2 tracks. <clears throat> well, I didn't think a no demon live stream for Shimigami Tensei 1 existed before this, and on the GBA2, which lineman are we shooting for this time? What's up, Green? Um, currently, I have no idea. I'm probably just gonna make choices, the choices that I uh, see correct whenever I see them. Or I could just let the chat decide, like last time. <laughs> Heck, we might even get the law ending again. Or if we have a couple of edgelords in the chat, uh, maybe the chaos ending. <laughs> oh! Dang it, why are you healing yourself? No! Okay, so the auto battle in this version, uh is just a repeat of your previous actions. It's not like the original version where auto-battling just, um, it just forces you to use physical attacks. 
I heard that- oh, we've already been here. Yeah, this place gets really confusing. Unless you have the mapper spell out, which, uh, I probably should use. Oh, dang it! I forgot to set our auto battle again! <laughs> been a hot simit. A uh, hot simit. <laughs> That's another um, addition to uh, Spirit Cannot Speak. <laughs> um, it's been a hot minute since I played SMT4, so I wouldn't know that was the first SMT game I've ever played, and that was years ago. Well, that is a really good first Shin Megami Tensei game. Not only is it the best for um, getting into the series for beginners, but it's also just a genuinely fun, challenging game. It was technically my, uh, I think it was, it was either my first or second mainline Shin Megami Tensei game. Technically speaking, my first SMT game in general, or Megami Tensei game, was Persona 1. And Persona 2 ended up being one of my favorite uh, games of all time. Um, but my first mainline Shin Megami Tensei game was, uh, oh, Yuriko. My, my, we meet again. I like, I like quiet places like this. I know who you are, Miss Black Samurai. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I think it was either SNT4 or SNT Nocturne that was my first mainline game. I don't quite remember which, but, uh, I do know that I finished SNT4 first. Also, slime! <laughs> The sprite is very well defined in this game, I'll, I'll give it that. Um, so, slimes are a bit difficult to fight in this uh, game. They have massive physical defense, so if you want to auto-battle this with physical attacks, it's not going to work. As you will probably know, free damage. And whenever the slimes attack, they will heal their HP. So the best way to deal with them is to just use magic attacks. Unfortunately, I severely neutered my uh, magic damager due to not giving him a high magic stat. <laughs> my bad, Arthur. <laughs> Slime reached out with frigid hands. Yeah, as you can see, the icon at the top, um, he recovered his uh, stance, which meant that he healed a little bit. Yeah, this battle could last forever if you just decide to brute force it with physical attacks. At that point, it would kind of be impossible to win. Uh, maybe I should bring the mapper spell out. Welcome! Oh, the American soldier. This is our first American soldier. Goto says that he'll summon demons to make an ideal country. Our forces have taken steps to prevent that. Uh, I forgot how topical this game is <laughs> nowadays. Mr. Thorman is our ambassador to Japan. He took action because he couldn't allow the confusion in Tokyo to continue any longer. His actions are well intended. Uh, sure, buddy. We'll see exactly how well intended his actions are later on. There was a man in a wheelchair there. I wonder what happened to him. Uh, he got sucked up by a black hole and is now the uh, ultimate being of the universe. <laughs> so, uh, good for him. <laughs> Alright, so what do you have to offer? I've never actually used, um, I never actually bought stuff from the bar in my original playthrough. I think this is just healing items. I'm not sure. A group calling themselves the Resistance is standing up to the U.S. Army. I don't think they work for Goto, though. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, the American Army is against Goto, uh, using demons to take over the entire nation. So now we have a war on the streets of Tokyo with the American army going up against Goto. Are you looking for a girl? Try asking JB. You can find him at the disco. At this point, we're basically just uh, 
Oh yeah, Ozawa, his right-hand man. Ozawa was the guy who uh, bullied um, Cookie at the beginning of the game. For a SNES game, this, uh, this game has a lot of uh, small little uh, plot lines that you can pay attention to throughout the game. They don't really amount to much, but they are interesting to learn. There's a resistance too. This girl by the name of Fita <laughs> heads it up. <laughs> Again, for uh, anyone who doesn't know what that name means, don't look it up. <laughs> and also blame Revan. He's the one who came up with it. Even if our civilization were to go on, mankind only faces destruction. Commander Goto took action because he was worried that would be the case. Yes, he took action by summoning demons into the real world and sticking them all across uh, the innocent bystanders of the land. And basically starting a war with a different country. Sounds like a very pleasant guy. <laughs> I bet this whole martial law thing will be over soon. Yeah, I bet you all my money. <laughs> the same goes for that coop. It's dangerous to resist the people in the coop, though. Whenever they say the word coop, I always, like, uh, think of the term flu the coop. <laughs> so I never think, like, of coop de ta. I just think, oh, they, 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 they don't want to fight the uh, home that they have. Okay. <laughs> Three monsters keep showing up. And martial laws got all the roads closed. There's no way for me to get home. Oh yeah, all the poor people who are pretty much stuck in these malls or buildings that really have nowhere to go. Then again, Steven... Oh, Imp. He's like a recolor of the gremlin. Then again, um... Steven did distribute the devil... The... The... the I am apparently turning into Porky Pig as the stream goes on. Um, Steven, one second. Ah, water. I should have done my tongue exercises before I started the stream, <laughs> which is something that I thought of doing uh, a while back because I end up getting tongue-tied during these streams all the time. But uh, I forgot to do that. <laughs> um, but what I was saying was, Steven uh, distributed the demon summoning program to everyone in Tokyo that had internet. Um, so all these people probably had access to the program but ended up deleting it. Heck, we even meet a guy at the beginning of the game who straight out stated that he got the program from his PC but immediately deleted it because he thought it was spam. I mean, Fair, dude. I would probably do the same thing. Oh my god, what damage. But, yeah. <laughs> you have no one else to blame but yourself. Yeah, I, I... This is just... This is very, very slow. <laughs> on and let's use guns because apparently the guns actually do a decent amount of damage against the slimes and they do drop a decent amount of cash i would be getting more cash if i talk to demons wait ashram oh right the healer okay i don't even know what ashram even means uh, i might as well use some money here if you roll chaos on this, he'd be making s &T history again. Oh, is there like no one who's done a, a series of the chaos route in s &T 1 GBA yet? In that case, that sounds pretty cool. Oh, yeah, we can't. We don't have any demons, so we can't fuse anything. I didn't even fuse the Cerberus. Which I always did. <laughs> How long is this game on average? Uh, about... I would give it 50 hours if you're not going for any optional stuff. If you're on the emulator, then it'll go like... I would say 45 hours to 40 hours if you use the speed up feature. <laughs> Basically cutting down on grinding. Also, Jack o Lantern. <laughs> I love this boy too. He helped me a ton in uh, SMT5. Not as much as Jack Frost, though. Jack Frost is a beast in that game. 
they gave Jack Frost a special ability. Uh, I think it was called Jack Bufula, which is the Bufula spell on every single enemy with the uh, effect of lowering uh, the enemy's defense and all the enemy's defense, not just one. So that is a pretty useful skill. Um, we're gonna increase luck. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jack Bufula basically helped me during the Luke Gadu battle, which wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. I am playing on hard mode on SMT5, but uh, really the biggest challenge so far was the uh, Fion battle, the battle against the uh, Celtic warrior who licks his thumb. I had to end up using a really weird strategy that involved a Satanta that I made. Oh, oh by the way, <laughs> this is an interesting story. So um, I was like level 22. Um, in SMT5, I was in the school portion when you return from the, uh, when you f return from the dot world. Um, I was level 22 and I was doing some fusions. I decided to make, uh, Incubus, who was, a uh, close level at the time. And somehow I ended up getting a fusion accident which resulted in a level 35 Satanta. <laughs> I had a level 35 physical oriented demon at level 22. <laughs> I didn't really use him much during uh, basic battles or um, most of the boss battles, but uh, y you better believe I used him during the Luke Gadu and Fion battle. Um, I ended up using a strategy involved uh, Satanta using Taunt on Fion, which caused Fion to do all of his physical attacks onto Satanta. Because Satanta was that high of a level, he was able to tank most of the hits, <laughs> thankfully. And then I ended up using uh, fire dampeners to ensure that my party won't get hit whenever he gets his Magatsuhi. Because for some reason, whenever he got his Magatsuhi phase up, uh, he only used um, Maragion, I think was his spell. Yeah, he ended up using that. So basically, I had three fire dampeners, a Satanta... A Yakshini who had, I think, Fangbreaker. I no wait wait wait. Satanta had the Fangbreaker. Uh, Yakshini had the physical skill that lowered defense. And then I also had Jack Frost with uh, the Jack Bufula to lower the defense of Fion. And basically, I just it. I, I had to restart that battle multiple times because I, he ended up killing me, but eventually I managed to finish him off. <laughs> it took a while, but it was worth it, and I didn't even have to level grind. And currently I am at level 35? It's either level 35 or level 36. I forget. I... Uh, stopped playing yesterday. Um, I got to the point where I was able to make Haridi, so that should give you an estimate on where exactly I am. Oh yeah, I like this little tidbit. Uh, this In this mall, both Goto's army and the American army are in separate bars right next to each other, but they're not fighting each other. Basically, they have like a little standstill in these two bars, and neither of them will actually uh, have the heart to go up against either. <laughs> and meanwhile, we have the Resistance, who's hiding somewhere in this building as well. So we have like all three factions underneath the same roof who absolutely hate each other. <laughs> yeah, the unique skills in SMT5 were pretty crazy. Shoutouts to Edune. Hey, I love Edune's uh, skill in that game. Um, I also love her idol animation, which is very cool. She's basically just like an idol, but, you know, a tasteful kind of idol. <laughs> Only time I've ever gotten a fusion accident was me getting Legion that was 10 levels under me at the time, which was pretty boring. Yeah, sometimes that, that's usually what my fusion accidents turn into. 
unfortunately I've never gotten lucky to get the uh, fusion accidents in Persona 1, which grants you the full Personas. Now those are considered truly broken. Okay, so I'm going to do what I did during the SNES version. I'm going to make a save state before I buy stuff. And I'm going to buy everything. <laughs> Buy all the stuff from the shop. And then I'm going to equip it onto my character and see what is actually good. No. Uh, did I buy the combat boot? I think rider boot. I'm already offering a discount. I can't go any lower. Oh, dang. Okay. Well, I'll definitely get the combat boot. Alright. So now what I do is I equip it onto my character. Huh, in the SES version, they had the ability to equip items in the shop. I guess they removed that. Well, since I don't have any helmets or gloves, technically these are better than what I had. Ooh. That, uh, lowers our evasion. Okay, I'm gonna want my evasion, so I'll probably keep the hunting vest. Full helm I'll definitely buy, and rivet gloves I can probably do without for now. Okay. So I did my shopping. I can load the save state. There we go. I will buy the full helm. And I will equip it. Perfect gloves, definitely. Alright, there we go. I don't need to buy anything for the other two because they, they, they have good equipment at the moment. <laughs> But, yeah, that is much better. Now Mogrim can actually survive hits. <laughs> Beer saves the day for now. But what if you don't like to drink? <laughs> well, that's on you. Liuya... Liuya Dao. I don't know what that is. Ooh, that's really good. The San Jiegun? The San Jiegun. It hits from one to three times. Better than our Tanfa, which hits only two times. Granted, Tanfa is a guaranteed two hits. The San Jiegun hits either one, two, or three times. But it has more attack and accuracy, so... Definitely a sword that we'll need to get. I won't be finishing the Tokyo session today. Um, I will try to get as close as possible. Because what I want to do is I want to grind money off screen by uh, negotiating with demons. So you can actually negotiate with demons in this game and you can uh, they, they give you an option to either join your party or for them to give you currency. And I always go with the currency because that gives me a lot of cash. A lot more cash than uh, getting them from random drops ever did. In fact, I can actually show it off right now. Malgrim began talking to the demon. Uh, let's talk friendly. <laughs> You're the living definition of the weird idiot. <laughs> Do you want to love me? Uh, yeah. Okay, so here it is. They give you uh, multiple options. You can either make them your ally, uh, they will give you money, magnetite, or you can just literally tell them to beat it. <laughs> Um, since we'll never summon demons in this game, Magnetite is virtually useless, so money it is. And we immediately got 720. <laughs> in a battle that probably would have given us, like, uh, 100, or not even, maybe like, uh, 20. <laughs> so yeah, uh, negotiating with demons in this game is the best way to grind for money. resistance that is fighting two enemies at once, huh? Wow. Wow. Their leader must be both smart and brave to take on the coup. You said it, Will Smith. 
Seriously, he just looks like Will Smith. Okay. Oh, wrong button. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to be abusing the uh, fast forward feature from now on. Ooh, I think this is the spot where you can encounter the fiend in the game. <laughs> Will I actually do that in this version? Probably not. <laughs> it took me forever to get the uh, fiend David to appear in the uh, SNES version. Yeah, like, look at that. It gave us 42 yen. <laughs> like, you barely get anything when you uh, just beat the demons. Ooh, the disco looks really fancy in this version. It's all red and Velcro. Also, I've always been a fan of this guy's outfit. Don't, don't ask me why, but I, I'm, I'm a sucker for those types of uh, pants. I don't know what they're called. The pants where they're like really big at the bottom. Um, that kind of look like uh, lamps, lampshades. <laughs> I know there's a term for it, but I just, I, I, I never, uh, I don't remember it. I bet the Americans are gonna about are gonna shoot missiles at us. Someone save me! Oh God, what is with those shades, Mister? It's like good as Utterlings. Ozawa's looking for the resistance leader. Bell bottoms. That's what it is. It does kind of look like a bell. More specifically, Fite. But he doesn't know what she looks like, so he's capturing all the girls with her name. So apparently. Japan is just full of girls that are named Fite. <laughs> we gotta look for... <laughs> we gotta find Fite. Just kidnap every single girl you can find. I'm sure we'll find Fite eventually. <laughs> Again. If you know Norwegian... If, if you speak Norwegian, then good for you. But also not good for you. <laughs> uh... It's a bar where tons of American soldiers have gathered. Ga gathered. Okay, they've gathered apparently. <laughs> okay, I didn't actually read what you said. There's no knowing what lengths the Americans will go to if it comes down to it. Yeah, I keep skipping some of the dialogue. Why do we have to do what this Goto guy tells us to do? Because he's taken over the government and has issued martial law. <laughs> Goto, that ambassador, whichever. I just wish they'd keep their little feud on our, of our, out of our backyard. Does Cerberus not count for this run, or is just, or is this a strict no demon run? Uh, Cerberus does not count. In fact, I didn't even make Cerberus. <laughs> um, I put some of the rules in the description. Uh, basically, no demons will be used in battle whatsoever. I might end up getting a demon with a stoma if I really, really, really do not like all the encounters that I'm getting into. And granted, the dungeons will just get longer and longer. <laughs> so I may end up making a demon with a stoma. Who knows? Um, also, sword, view, sword fusions. Uh, those require elements slash uh, de specific demon races. So that is a maybe. I won't ever have to use them in combat, but uh, uh, that would require me making demons. I'll consider it, maybe. Then again, the best sword in the game, which was the Hino Kakutsuchi, it kind of broke the late game. And then after I got my heroine, the Lotus Wand, and the max luck and strength stat, it, she ended up breaking it even more. <laughs> so yeah, I might not get the Hino Kakutsuchi for uh, the main character. We'll see. We'll see. It might be even more interesting to just go in with the basic swords and nothing special. Although we will still get the Lotus Wand. If the coup succeeds, the demons take over Tokyo. Thorman said that he would order missiles to be launched at Tokyo. That's why I ran away. Yes, you ran into Tokyo, the place that is going to be bombarded with missiles. Okay. <laughs> okay, I believe you. Hey, Arthur has access to Mazan now. Alright, well, we're definitely going to use it because there are a lot of goblins here. 
And it missed some of them. Good thing this gun practically hits everyone. Yeah, guns are pretty OP in this game. Anything that's multi-hit is practically OP. Again, which is why the heroine is so good with uh, physical attacks. Because of her whips. <laughs> going on pretty long. Battles usually don't last us long early game. But we did get some decent cash. <laughs> and decent experience. But yeah, something interesting happened during the um, cutscene where Cerberus was supposed to be sucked into the terminal. Um, it was Pascal that ended up getting sucked in, not Cerberus. So I'm wondering how that's going to affect later in the game when we can eventually meet up with Cerberus again. Because, spoiler, uh, Cer Pascal is okay. Uh, he's not dead. We'll meet him again, but not until like really, really late into the game. I'm talking like near the end game. <laughs> So I don't know what's going to happen when we get there. It's the he homeboy himself, all ye. <laughs> okay. Does it actually track our time in this game? I know it didn't track our time in the SNES version, but uh, I think it actually does when you go to a save state or save point. could have sworn there's a turb- Oh boy, we're fighting the Yakuza! I'm surprised I didn't encounter you guys in Kichijoji. But yeah, these are like early game enemies. <laughs> they got hit by the gunshot and they died instantly. Yeah, kind of a little late, guys. I can pretty much take care of the Yakuza no problem, which is a really weird sentence I never thought I'd say unless I... You know, I ended up playing one of those Yakuza games. Which I may one day. Ooh, we got a B from that. I'm actually okay with that. Oh, wait, no. Uh, oh yeah, it does tell us our uh, time. Nice. Two hours and we're already at level 12. Ha! I haven't made the mistake of saying no yet. Aw, yeah. <laughs> okay, so if I remember correctly... There was a bar that we were supposed to go to in order to get a matchbox. Uh, the bar was... Somewhere. <laughs> the bar was somewhere. Hmm. Oh, I think it's at the bottom over there. Yeah, so we need to head south. If you play the Sega CD version, somehow name the heroine Sally. The in-joke will explain itself. <laughs> okay. Is it because of her brown hair? I'm like trying to think of the reference. I think it, I think it's because of the brown hair, and I know which Sally you're talking about, by the way. <laughs> also, I don't, I, you say somehow because yeah, I agree. I'm I don't I don't know how I'll be able to play the SNES or the Sega CD version, um, translated because there is currently no translation of the Sega CD version, and I don't think there are any plans to translate it at all. Which sucks, because that version is probably one of the most interesting ones. That and the PS1 version. The PS1 version is, like, my favorite and the one I want to try most of all. Including, uh, for SMT2 and SMDF. Um, but... The Sega CD version has, like, actual voiced cutscenes. And... The music is weird. But it's also very experimental and interesting. And... The sprites are also really interesting. Oh, Yuriko's gone. Okay. 
Well, it looks like the summer, the black samurai has taken her books elsewhere. <laughs> Don't think I recognize you, hmm? Wait. Do you have the demon summoning program? Yeah. Do you think it's okay to let demons kill as they please? No. Do you think it's wrong to bring about peace through overwhelming force? Considering the current times, definitely. I have something for you. Take this, it should help you find the one you're looking for. And we've obtained a matchbox. Now go home, kid. So with this matchbox, we'll be able to uh, go downstairs and meet up with a certain someone that we kind of need to meet up with <laughs> to progress the plot. So I believe the staircase on the far right is the way we need to go. So long, Jack. Ooh, another bead. Awesome. Yeah, uh, Sally from Sonic. At least that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> I don't quite know any other Sally. Alright, so I think it's, uh, this room right here. Ooh. I'm just- I just keep getting impressed by all the different backgrounds that this game has. Because they're all so different from the original SNES version. They look so... crispy. <laughs> it's like someone boiled them underneath a giant grill and it's like... Mm. <laughs> That's some good backgrounds. Out of my way, oh shichi. I don't care about you or your husband, Goku. N no, that's Chi Chi. <laughs> this area is off limits. You got the pass? Yes, I do, Will Smith. Yeah, show it to me. Okay, that's the real thing. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so apparently we just needed a matchbox. <laughs> this guy looks cool. He's not important whatsoever, but he looks cool. <laughs> so you're the leader of the resistance? Hold on there, I'm not the leader. We don't let outsiders meet our leader face to face. It's alright. I will meet with them personally. Wait, where, where is this voice coming from? This is a very small room. I don't think she could hide anywhere. Are you sure? Alright then. She's in the back. Welcome. Malgrim. Arthur. Lobo. I mean Cookie. <laughs> I have been waiting for you to come here. Man, I really regret not naming them after Ned's declassified characters. <laughs> oh, that would have been so better. Man. And I'm trying to think, like, can I do that for SMT2? No, I don't think it'll fit for SMT2. Also, this is Fita. The leader of the resistance is uh, the girl that we saved in our dreams. Uh, and yeah, she apparently shares the name of Arthur's girlfriend and a bunch of other girls in Tokyo. <laughs> and so I waited for you, for you to come and help me for real. She didn't actually start out as the resistance leader. She, uh, according to some of the supplementary material, which is in this port, um, the vision quest specifically, um, you learn that she came to this town because of her latent mystical powers, and she wanted to use them to f for the better of the world. She also felt like she had to meet someone named Mogrim no matter what. Seeing this threat, the American ambassador Thorman is taking action. So yeah, Thorman is in charge of the American army, which is currently being held up in, uh one of the locations in Tokyo. Meanwhile, Goto is uh, bringing up his army and basically going at war with the American army. So we basically got two armies going against each other and everyone else is caught in the middle of it. Hence the resistance here, trying to stop both sides and ensuring that casualties are kept at a minimum. You know where Feet is? I am right here. <laughs> After that, we must subdue Goto's- Oh, right, and, uh, 
Goto has also captured all the girls in Tokyo that share Fita's name. So apparently, a lot of Japanese parents thought it was a good idea to name their kids Fita. <laughs> Not only is it weird because it's a Nordic name, or Nor Nordic, uh, word, but, uh, it, it has some really weird con- it has some really bad connotations. <laughs> also, he's in league with Ozawa, so, uh, both our characters, Arthur and Cookie, are pretty much invested in this. An enemy of Ozawa is a friend of mine. I'm in. Will you help the Resistance leader? Uh, well, we really don't have a choice. Our mother's dead, Kichijoji is basically caught in flames, and, uh, yeah, I think this is probably our best bet. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so there you are. <gasps> the Black Samurai! <laughs> dun dun dun! I mean, basically. I finally found pussy. I'm t <laughs> I basically said what Fita uh, means. So, uh, there you go, for anyone who was curious about that. <laughs> Yuriko has took our pussy. No, Yuriko. How dare you. Just because we didn't want her, Fite. We took our leader. This is a catastrophe. We don't have any time to lose. We gotta hurry and save her. So yeah, we immediately come into the Resistance uh, leader's room, and then she immediately gets kidnapped. Somehow I feel like it's our fault. Nyeh. <laughs> Spirit Shade. Oh yes, my uh, uh, other favorite uh, Sonic Archie comic character. <laughs> if we're talking about Sonic for a second. Alright, well these guys don't seem to be affected by physical attacks, so magic it is. Alright, yeah, magic works. Moragi's probably gonna do a ton of damage, yep. Considering they are undead. Shade reached out with frigid hands. Oh, apparently uh, physical attacks do work. And they give decent experience as well. <laughs> Note to self, fight those things a lot. I was gonna say because they share the same role in both Sad AM and this game, at least at first. Oh, I because she's the resistance leader. Okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> now that I think about it. We should have a Shin Megami Tensei game for the channel where I name all the characters after Sonic characters. I got it. I got it. Aleph in Shin Megami Tensei 2 as Shadow. <laughs> um, 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 Beth as Maria because it totally fits. Uh, Dalith as Sonic because he's like the anti messiah to Aleph's messiah. Uh, what would Gimmel be? Someone who's completely useless and drops out of the plot immediately. Knuckles. <laughs> that makes me sad because I actually like Knuckles. Um, and Hiroko. Uh, does anyone ship Amy with Shadow besides me? Just me? Okay, well I'm gonna name her Amy. <laughs> okay, that totally fits. <laughs> Wait, then again. For spoiler reasons, calling Hiroko Amy, I just realized, is very, very weird. Uh, okay. Maybe that's not necessarily a good idea. Uh, but I just, I just wanted to make a Tensei game where I can name all those characters after Sonic. Maybe during, uh, Majin Tensei, because I know you can name a bunch of characters in that one. Heck, you actually have, like, two female characters that you can name in that game. I don't know much about Majin Tensei, I just know the basics of it. Mostly because I don't want to get spoiled uh, about the game's plot. 
Well, more spoiled than I already have, unfortunately. The internet does not know how to hide, uh, spoilers. <laughs> or I should say, the Wikipedia articles do not know how to hide, uh, spoilers. <laughs> Alright, uh, one second. I will be right back. I'm gonna make a phone call. Okay, I am back. Let me just get the chat back up. All right. <laughs> so, uh, we've met up with the resistance leader and she's been kidnapped. Oh no. So, the next thing we got to do is we got to find a certain location around here. Right, we have to find the exact same spot where Yuriko was last time. Because that's where we'll find the guy who's a part of the Resistance who's looking for her. And they will give us the clue to where, uh, Fita has been taken. Yeah, at this point, the battles have started to overstay their welcome a little bit. <laughs> Especially since these are, like, really easy battles. So they're not really much of a challenge at this point. Uh, okay, I believe... Yeah, the bar was, like, right to the right of us. So, Green, if I was to choose a Shin Megami Tensei game where I will name all the characters after Sonic characters, which game would you prefer me to do? that for and it has to have like a bunch of characters that you can name and I don't think much is coming to mind besides SMT2 and Majin Tensei which is unfortunate <laughs> the leader is going to be publicly executed in front of the government office all right so do you remember those two uh, giant uh, tower buildings in Shinjuku yep that's where we need to go so we need to go fight Yamaki and uh, his wicked Yugoth program from dis from deleting all the Digimon in the city. Actually, if we take the demons as digital monsters, considering they were created from uh, machines, or that you can uh, summon them from machines, uh, they basically are Digimon. <laughs> Which means, uh, <laughs> Digimon and Shin Megami Tensei have a lot in common. I said that a lot when I played Cyber Sleuth. That there's a lot of stuff in common with both, both franchises. 
Man, I really want to get back into Cyber Sleuth again. I put it down for like over a year because of reasons. Mostly because uh, I was uh, getting into other games at the time, so I kind of uh, fell off of Digimon for a bit. But I've been getting a hankering for it again, and I really want to play it uh, sometime soon. I gotta get reinvested into the story, though. I forget exactly what we were doing before that point, so... I'll probably have to watch the last part that I recorded, like... a year ago. <laughs> Okay, so I'm definitely gonna heal here. Alright, there goes my dog. He apparently needs to be let out of my room, so one second while we heal. I will be right back. is here uh, in the house, so I don't know why he wants to go over there. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're good. So now we just need to get out of here. We need to get to the government building as fast as possible. We gotta save Fita. But first, how about some optional side quest material? <laughs> I love in JRPGs where you have like a huge objective, but you can just completely ignore it and go to side quest stuff. Also, I completely forgot to show this off. Uh, you have this giant monitor here that has Goto on it. Studio Alto. I am Goto, in command by martial law. The civilization is rotten to its core. Our society is built on exploitation of Gaia, the Earth, as prejudice, poverty, and war, and God and fetus. Our uh, Malgram's like, blah, 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 blah. So this is the guy that took everything from me, huh? <laughs> that crisis is the Japan Annihilation Project. We have drawn on the power of the ancient gods to fight this horrific conspiracy. Our aim is for gods and mankind to coexist and create a utopia. So yeah, he's harnessed the power of the old gods of Japan and has essentially created his army of demons to go against the government and the American government, both Japan and American government, for what seems to be considered a conspiracy. Very interesting, very, very interesting. Oh, apparently they could be damaged by guns. Okay. Alright, so this is the building that I was talking about earlier. It is optional. You can come here, or you don't have to come here. But if you do, you'll face an optional battle against a certain someone. Also more mag that we don't actually need. <laughs> now this place was a lot bigger than I remembered. And they have horses running in the hallways. Oh god. Okay, this thing is actually pretty powerful. Or not. <laughs> I was expecting more of a challenge. Hey, there he is. Ozawa himself. The guy that Cookie is after. It's time I pay you back for that day. You're that bad from Kichi Joji. Still playing Demon Slayer, huh? This guy is really weird. Uh, he's like a very unnoteworthy NPC in this game. Who only has like one blatant personality and that he's a, he's a jerk. And then they bring him back in a very niche Shin Megami Tensei If spinoff comic. Where he becomes like this total badass who's the protector of Tokyo or something. It's so weird. <laughs> 
In this one, he's uh, Goto's right hand man and only really cares about getting power for himself. And he is also a devil summoner. <laughs> I'm gonna head off to sleep. I need to get up early morning. Have a good stream. Thank you, Innocence. I'll see you later. And I hope you have a good night. <laughs> Alright, so Baycock. The giant skeleton. The giant skellywelly. If I remember right, this is a pretty easy battle. Especially since we have Sanma. <laughs> well, we have a very powerful spell early game. Petrati cures one ally of petrification. We rarely see petrification early in the game. Ooh, okay. Mogram is not doing... Mogram isn't doing much damage, but the magic users definitely are. I will say that magic is not good. Uh, physical attacks aren't really the best early game. But magic attacks are amazing, uh, late that, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Physical attacks aren't really great early game, but magic attacks are pretty beast early on. Magic attacks start to lose their luster once you get to the middle portion of the game, and that's when physical attack starts to overrun them. Hence why I gave, uh, the other two characters high magic stats. Which caused me to, like, two-turn this thing. Jesus. It gave me a decent amount of experience, though. Okay. So, what I'm thinking is I'm going to start investing my stats in magic. I'm going to put it up to 9 or 10, just so I can have a high magic defense. So I can be ready for the Kongo Kai. Because again, I'm going to need all the help I can get once I get to that section. And everyone else can just raise their magic stat even more. Ozawa left. Uh, one second, I think I'm being called. my dog is doing well. <laughs> Did you know that Tom Clancy of Splinter Cell, Ghost Recon, and Rainbow Six, Rainbow Six fame was the author of the book The Hunt for Red October was based off of? Hmm, I did not know that. I also don't know what The Hunt for Red October is. <laughs> I am unfortunately very uncultured, so there are many things that I do not know. <laughs> unfortunately. But do pray tell what exactly that is, Green. <laughs> you know, maybe I should start using my uh, physical attack with Arthur. It's probably better than his gun. Never mind. <laughs> He's actually doing more damage with his gun. <laughs> now that I think about it, do we have any extra swords that we can give to him? Machete. Oh, I have the really bad attack knife. Uh, spiked rod, what does that do? 
One. Okay. Not worth it. <laughs> I would have been okay if it hit like twice, but eh. The Tonfa is just so good because it hits more than once. It is a very worthwhile item. Alright, so we're heading into the Metropolitan Building. This is going to be a really difficult battle, similar to the Doman battle. Um, if I'm not prepared correctly, I might bite the bullets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of those safe states that I mentioned earlier that I wasn't going to use <laughs> just in case because we've been going on for quite a bit. And also, I don't want to redo the Ozawa battle again. We got to stop them from doing the public execution on Fite. Soldiers of the Coop Force, demons, and spectators are gathered in the open area. I like how Tokyo has gotten to the point where everyone is pretty much okay with demons now, and they're kind of like at arms with each other. Or not, not at arms with each other. Uh, hand in hand with each other. And they're basically doing like a uh, cyberpunk style execution. You'll see why I, meant, why I said cyberpunk in a minute. <laughs> Once you see what the guards look like. Finally captured Fite. Yeah, so Yuriko was the one who captured her. The leader of the resistance that was such a thorn in the grand Goto side. Goto has graciously forgiven this woman for the relentless sabotage she ordered. But her crime of defying the mighty Goto cannot be so easily wiped away. And so this woman, this woman, Fite, female, <laughs> plural, sentence is execution. So yeah, they're going to uh, execute her right in front of an entire audience. And yeah, Yuriko has a bunch of gimps as her soldiers. <laughs> Honestly, they looked more like gimps than in the original version. In this one, they just look like uh, leatherheads. <laughs> Yuriko, what are you doing? <laughs> Basically. If you'd chosen me to begin with, maybe you wouldn't have come to such a sad end. Lady, you never gave us a choice. All you did was show up in the middle of the cafe that we go to and was like, Oh, it's fancy meeting you here. And then we never saw you again. <laughs> Until now. And every time we do see you beforehand, you just suddenly disappear. Alright, so this is like a huge gauntlet of multiple enemies. First is the zombie cops. I'm going to hit every single one of them with magic attacks. P2 will be doing physical attacks. Because they are zombies, they seem to take a lot of damage from fire. So Miragi, really good here. It practically wiped them all out. <laughs> okay, maybe this will be a lot easier than I thought it would be. Uh, yeah, let's just uh, go with the physical attacks here. That's it for the zombie cops. They're also giving decent, uh, EXP and money. Next is the Undead Army Zombies. Thickiverse, same as the first. We're just gonna use AoE magic attacks here. Malgrim is technically faster than the other two, which is a good thing to see. 78 damage! That's going to take out every single one of them, unless it misses one. Oh yee! <laughs> yee boy! This is, this is really easy, apparently. Ooh, that was some really good EXP. And now we have Army, Zombie, and Lemur. I don't want to kill a Lemur, those are cool animals. Ooh, I like the reticle here. That's, uh, that's new. Kind of looks like you're gonna you're about to shoot them. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Mazan on the lemurs, while Cookie focuses on the zombie soldiers because he can actually take them all out instantly. And Mazan didn't do much. Actually, none of our attacks are doing much against the lemurs. Nice. Hopefully Miragi can do better. The Hunt for Red October is a movie- Ooh, that actually did do better. 
is a movie set during the closing days of the Cold War that involves a Soviet sub going rogue and threatening to launch nuclear warheads at both the US and USSR. Ah, uh, so it's definitely fitting for the game that we're playing at the moment, considering that's exactly what's about to happen right now. Well, that's what we're trying to avoid in the game. <laughs> All that experience and Malgrim finally leveled up once. Hmm. I still want to increase his magic stat for the magic defense. Trust me, it's it, it it'll all make sense once we get to the Kongo Kai slash Diamond Realm. Oh, there's still more battles. All right, Lemur and Ghoul. Malgrim, you're gonna take care of the Ghoul. Arthur will Mazan. Actually, let's try a Zamba on the Ghoul. Cookie will use Miragi on the lever. We're all faster than any of these guys. Ooh, probably should have used the Mazan on the lemurs. Now that I saw that. Well, unless we took out one of the ghouls. Ooh, okay. That is some damage on Arthur. Arthur is apparently very squishy. Can we take out the levers? I'm pretty sure we can now. All right, and that basically won the battle. <laughs> okay, it was a little dodgy at the end, but our high agility and high magic stat for the other two really paid off. I'm actually thoroughly impressed by these guys. Oh, looks like I'm done for. Oh, woe is me. And then she gets carried away by her gimps. <laughs> I can just imagine them all, like, uh, lifting her up by their uh, palms. And she's just doing, like, the draw me like a French girl's pose. <laughs> like, woe is me. <laughs> you saved me. Just like in the dream. Thank you. Now can you let me down, please? You better hurry up. I hurry out of here. This hideout's no good anymore. Or this hideout's no good anymore. So meet me at that bar. Wait, did she mean that that... Did she try to imply that that was our, their hideout? <laughs> okay, that was a weird sentence. Maybe I'm just delirious by the fact that we've been streaming for almost three hours. Eh, it's probably that. <laughs> Heal everyone. There we go. Now, where was the bar? I think it was south. Yeah. All right. So we need to get back to the bar where Yuriko first appeared at, and that is where we can find Fita again. Oh, we saved her. Ooh, kobolds. <laughs> Ooh, kobolds. <laughs> Anytime kobolds are involved, I'm like, I am so into this. <laughs> Especially if it's a wolf cobalt. But yeah, we saved uh, Fite from being executed by Yuriko. So now we can initiate our plan to go against Goto. Oh yeah. There we go. That took a bit of finagling. Oops. Right, it's down here. Okay. Another kobold. Sorry, kobold. You were done for. You don't give much experience either. Okay, so before we actually uh, meet up with her, we're going to end up losing Arthur and Cookie for a while. So what I want to do... Oh, dang. He's gonna... Not gonna be able to get his machete. That is unfortunate. That's fine. I'm going to de-equip everything off of them. Including their, uh, guns. 
Beretta 92F. Oh, apparently I got a Beretta 92. Oh, we got the MP5 SMG. Oh, oh, I, I, I guess uh, Cookie already had the MP5 SMG. I didn't even notice that. Okay, well, in that case, I can immediately give that to Mogram, and he'll have uh, a beautiful gun right then and there. All right, but we're not done yet. He has normal shells, combat boots. Rivet gloves, that's technically worse. Hmm. No, actually, the plain gloves. Uh, ceramic vest. Six, two, eight, zero. Hunting vest is probably better. Full helm. Okay, we gave them the least uh, good equipment. So now we'll give all the best equipment to Mogrim, because he he will basically be our main character at this point. You know, if I knew we were going to get a hunting vest and a full helm from uh, Lobo or Cookie, I probably wouldn't have bought them with my money, <laughs> but oh well. We at least got the MP5 SMG, so we won't have to backtrack all the way to uh, the sh gun shop in order to get them. Um, but yeah, so now Mogram has all the best equipment, and so we're about to lose Arthur and Cookie. Doesn't really mean much, <laughs> because we will end up be getting uh, we will end up getting Fite as our next uh, party member. Thank you so much for saving our leader. Have Mogram and the others come? Yes, that's correct. Mogram, Arthur, Simon, <laughs> thank you very much. Not only did you three save my life, you have saved the last hope of avoiding Tokyo's doom. As thanks, I will tell you the information we have obtained. So yeah, she's about to tell us that uh, all the people, all the girls who have named, been named Fite are being held in the Coop's headquarters in Ichigaya. So that is the place where Arthur needs to go to. And Ozawa, who we literally just dealt with, but he managed to escape after we defeated his demon. Um, they apparently know where he is now. So they're going to capture Ozawa because, you know, capturing the right-hand man of the guy who's in charge, probably a good strategic uh, move. I'm going to go rescue Fite. If I don't hurry, I may be too late. I mean, that's your girlfriend, so that's, that's fair. Sorry, but I'm going to take part in the resistance operation too. I can't let Ozawa get away no matter what. You hold a very deep grudge, good sir. It seems you're all alone now. You're lonely. Oh, so lonely. <laughs> Please, won't you come with me? I mean, I mean, we've only just met, but if you insist... <laughs> we must meet with Goto and the American ambassador at Ichigaya to save Tokyo. And we now have Fita in our party. The Coop Unit's headquarters, each- that, the key, that. Let me take a drink of water real quick. Before I end up losing my tongue. The Coop Unit's headquarters in Ichigaya are est. Yes, they are est of Shinjuku. Right next to west, or weast. <laughs> Right next to Weast, and definitely not near Nerth or South. <laughs> it is directly Est. The American Embassy is in Ropongi. We will need to pass underground from Yotsuya, south of Ichigaya, to get there. And then Mogger's like, uh, I, I just know Kichijoji, ma'am. I don't, I don't know anything, any other towns in Tokyo. With this fake ID card we have prepared, we will be able to enter both locations. If I want to seem weird uh, with a high schooler and a female dressed up in a giant white robe entering into the government's office. And again, they probably have devil summoners on their side, so maybe they have even more weirder individuals. <laughs> Alright, so let's check out Fita real quick. Her equipment she has a scorpion on hand and the scorpion is a three to five hit weapon with 
10 attack and 5 accuracy. This is what I'm talking about. The female characters having whip weapons, which hit for multiple times. Yes, the damage may not be as good as some of the uh, male weapons. That doesn't matter when you're doing multiple hits, as well as having a large luck stat, which will increase the uh, damage that you do. <laughs> not only that, but she has access to nerve shells which is an incredible uh, bullet because it inflicts the nerve status effect, which will basically paralyze the enemies. So basically, if you uh, start the battle with using your gun, she will um, cause paralysis on every single enemy. <laughs> She also has the Metal Crown, High Cut Armor, Gauntlet, and Sky Heels, and apparently one of these incre has increased her Intelligence and Agility stat. They are blue, so yeah. So what I'm going to do is I am going to de-equip the uh, Nerve Bullets off of Fite, and instead give her the normal bullets that Mogram has. Mogram will take the Nerve Bullets instead. The reason for this is because the Scorpion Whip more so accommodates the physical attack than Mogram's Tanta or Tanfa. Meanwhile, Mogram can just use his gun and nerve shells to paralyze every single enemy that we come across. It's definitely a better strategy. Now, for her magic, she has access to Diorama, Mapper, and Penpatra. Cures all allies of light status ailments. Wow, that is way better than the um, spell that uh, the cookie has. <laughs> So let's get into a battle real quick and test out to see uh, exactly how the strategy will play out. So Mogram will be using his gun and Fite will be using her scorpion whip. Mogram fires. And the enemy was too weak. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Okay, so we're kind of uh, facing uh, very weak enemies, so not the best... Not the best uh, way to test out our uh, power. I really want to get the Sanjiagun eventually, but uh, I don't think we'll have enough money yet. All right, let's test it out here, or not, because these guys are also pretty uh, powerful. Well, they're, they're pretty weak. Also, I pressed auto, so we weren't able to actually see the results. <laughs> we'll get into a battle that's a lot tougher, so we can actually test out um, just how powerful this strategy can actually be. But yeah, let's head to the um, to the uh, Coop's office, so we can end up meeting Goto. So Mogram fired his gun. Huh. He didn't get inflicted with paralysis for some reason. Hmm. Maybe it's... Maybe they're... Uh, maybe they uh, nullify it? It's a possibility. Space is off limits to civilians. Leave at once. What? Oh, you have an ID card? Uh, very well, high school student and random woman. You may pass. Hey, doesn't that woman look familiar? Isn't she like the woman on that wanted poster that we were supposed to look for? Bobby, shut up. <laughs> You're fired. Oh, she went first. Well, she's definitely taking care of most of the enemies at this point. <laughs> you go, Fita. Ooh, an elevator. Well, we could skip a bunch of uh, rooms, but I wouldn't want to do that. I want to actually get all the collectibles here. Right, maybe this guy will actually be affected. She, she hit him three times. Or not, because the gun is apparently really powerful. Okay, well, maybe we didn't need to... Um raise Mogram's uh, strength stat at this point because the gun is really powerful. It's making up for his lack of uh, strength and luck stat. I do anything he asks me for. 
Oh, really? If he asked, if he asked you, he wanted to butt fuck you. Would you actually do it? He probably would. All right, so we're in the basement, and I believe this is where we can find all of the captive uh, fetus, or the extra fetus. <laughs> I still don't know if these chests are affected by the moon phase, but I don't really care. They get an aquamarine though, so that's nice, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, this is where they're keeping all the fites. Why there are so many Japanese women named Fite, I have no idea. I say that as we haven't actually met any of them yet. It's... Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, random encounters are no longer an issue. Man, these two make a really good team. There's no one here. Well, I could have sworn there were actual, uh, characters. Oh! Oh no, the little girl! Please help, I'm so scared! Can you save her? Sure. Thank you, my name is Vita. I was kidnapped and take... Okay. I kind of regret giving the heroine that name now. <laughs> uh, oh, oof, that was a mistake. <laughs> did, did you come? Did she come to join our forces? You know what? Yeah, we're pretty much scummy at this point. We might as well. <laughs> we might as well accept our fate. Please help me. I don't know why no one would bother helping all these girls. A while ago, a man named Arthur came. He tried to save us, but a huge bunch of guards showed up, and he couldn't do it. Ooh, okay. Well, that was too bad. Oh wait, that means we just missed Arthur! Where the heck is he? Please help me, I haven't done anything wrong. You sure? <laughs> Thank you. There was another girl with me, but they took her away somewhere. Uh, that's probably Arthur's girlfriend, then. You know, the other Fite. <laughs> The other, other Fita. That's not the little girl Fita. I, I should stop saying that name. <laughs> uh, there's not much in this basement. Oh, yeah! The best... <laughs> the best enemy in the game. The suicide unit. Su suicide brigade. Go! Oh, goodness. They actually do some decent... De n never mind. I was about to say, they do some decent damage, and they're actually pretty powerful. Nope. <laughs> We're not inflicting uh, as much status effects as I thought we would be doing. You know what? They probably fixed that for the GBA version. Probably, because it was so uh, rampant in the SNES version. Like, using uh, nerve bullets or bullets that can inflict status effects always worked. No matter what, in the SNES version. So they probably lowered the rate of them uh, succeeding in this version, in, in this port. It makes sense, because we haven't been inflicting paralysis on any of the enemies that we've fought so far. Which is very, very unfortunate. Oh, maybe this is the chest that uh, changes during a full moon. Or not. <laughs> a luck and sense is pretty good. Fornius! The almighty Fornius, the king of demons himself? There, and there he goes! <laughs> I was hoping he would have died in one hit. That would have made the joke even better. <laughs> Alright, uh, heal me, please. Thank you, Miss Madam Fita. Kind of feel uncomfortable saying her name now. <laughs> We ended up getting a lot of incenses that I never used, so let's uh, use most of these on Magra. Just give him the luck. Incenses increase his luck. And uh, vitality, because he's going to be more important. Intelligence we can give to Fita. There's really no reason to give it to Magra. It'll also increase her magic potency as well as her MP, so 
Uh, that's definitely useful. Oh, more cash. We could actually afford the gun that we were trying to get. Even though we don't need to buy it anymore because we already took the gun from uh, Cookie. <laughs> no, I do not want to ride the elevator. No, thank you. Ghouls. I actually want to see this battle play out. Okay, five damage. Three times. The gun does decent damage. Also, yeah, the, um, the status effects aren't hitting. That is really, really weird. I'm so used to the SNES version where status effects completely break the game. But you know what? Good on them. Good on uh, Atlas for actually uh, balancing the game, the game's uh, um, exploits, I should say. They managed to balance it out and make it pretty fair. So now you can't just abuse guns in the game and hope to uh, inflict status effects on every single demon. They kind of made it uh, about as difficult as SMT2 and IF, where they also lowered the difficult the uh, success rate for uh, status effects. What is Commander Goto planning to do after summoning these demons? I'm starting to get scared. Not the voice I probably should have given him. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this floor. Pretty good floor, I should say. Boogie. I think this is a uh, Boogaboo. Either this is Boogaboo or the um, blue version that we'll meet later is Boogaboo. I love Boogaboo. <laughs> I also love his name. I love saying his name. Boogaboo. It's so adorable. Which reminds me, Strange Journey. I need to do that again. Um, Scar said that he really wanted to be a part of that game, but I don't know. He has a very busy schedule, so he might not be able to appear often for that. But uh, I'll ask him next time, and we'll see if he want, really wants to do it with me. Similar to how me and Reverend are doing like the Persona games. Azumi, I love you. I love your design in this game. I'm not necessarily a fan of your later uh, SMT incarnations, but this one with the fish head and the man body is really cool looking. It looks like something you'd see from a really old horror movie. A really old B horror movie, specifically. <laughs> like Monster from the Deep or something. Actually, kind of. Uh, if you squint your eyes, it kind of does look like a deep one. Which I don't think has been in any SMT game so far. Oh, there we go. There's the paralysis, or nerve. Finally, it hit. I wonder if uh, the succession for status effects increases with the amount of luck that you have. I'm not necessarily sure. Um, but yeah, something I want to do here is I want to increase my luck stat now. Learned a new spell. Yeah. I think my magic is at a good point with Fita where I don't need to increase it anymore. Especially with the amount of incenses I can find in this game. Uh, I can basically just increase her magic in that way. <laughs> Alright, nice. Oh. Is there anywhere else that I haven't been in? Apparently, there's a room to the left where you just can't enter whatsoever. Weird. Well, nevertheless, this seems like an important room. Ah, oh, there he is, the man himself who's wearing a diaper for some reason. Yes, I know it's not a diaper, but I, I like to call it that. <laughs> Welcome, I've been waiting for you. I am Goto, not a cat. <laughs> An actual man. I'm sure you're angry at me for what I did to Fite, but I'd like you to hear me out. Also, hello, Fite. I see you back there. You're not gonna speak? Okay. <laughs> I guess I'm speaking to your boyfriend now. Not even going to fight about the fact that I called him your boyfriend? Huh. I guess she doesn't want to speak at all. <laughs> Get used to that. She's not gonna speak for the rest of the game. Well, <laughs> for most of the game. 
Currently, there is a plan to create a Millennium Kingdom in the name of God. So yeah, the Millennium Kingdom. The people living there are promised eternal peace and prosperity. However, only a handful chosen by God are allowed to enter. Yep, similar to uh, Noah's Ark, only the chosen few can uh, witness the new world. All others will be massacred by the U.S. military in, the, in God's name. So, what you're telling me is that the U.S. military is in the pockets of God itself. <laughs> uh, let's see if that type of excuse works during the Geneva Convention. <laughs> the ancient gods of Japan protect this land from the missile attack. However, we are not strong enough. I ask that you aid us. I will give you some time to think about your answer. So yeah, they basically retcon, or not retcon, they basically reuse this entire plotline in SMT4, where the US Army shoots missiles at uh, Japan, and uh, the Japanese gods are the ones who protects it. It's actually kind of fascinating how they uh, handled the SMT references in that particular game. Also, the Suicide Brigade again, yay! <laughs> Let's actually fight them. I want to see how they fare against our damage. And they still didn't get affected by paralysis. You know, I'm starting to believe that Thor... Oh yeah, we, spoiler alert, we fight Thor eventually. Will not be inflicted by paralysis. <laughs> Which is a big shame. I really liked just using the Zeo spell on Thor and having him paralyzed by thunder. Yes, the literal god of thunder being paralyzed is a interesting thought, to say the least. <laughs> Alright, so we've met with uh, Goto. It's time to head to the uh, embassy to meet up with Ambassador Thorman. Need to hear his side of the story, apparently. It's also pretty confusing, uh, trying to get out of here. Alright, I want to test something out. We're going to use our guns, and we're also going to have Fita use a Mazeo spell. Okay! They've been electrocuted. So they can be inflicted by, uh, paralysis. Also, I guess Paralysis and Nerve is a completely different uh, status effect. Actually, I think Mazio is Shock, not uh, Paralysis. Which, uh, what's the difference? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they just decrease the rate that uh, guns do uh, status effects. That would make sense, considering guns are incredibly brutal in the original version. So, yeah, they probably did that to balance it out. It's an interesting change that I'm kind of okay with. It makes this uh, port a lot more difficult than I was expecting, because I was expecting to just abuse guns and status effects throughout this entire run. But, uh, no, I actually have to think a little bit. <laughs> Alright, so this is our way to the embassy. I'm thinking of uh, stopping the stream before we uh, get to Thorman. This place is out of bounds. Oh, you have an ID card? Yes, go on. Jedi Fachan. This is a really weird demon. It actually kind of reminds me of a... Okay, this is going to be a really weird weech. But this kind of reminds me of the Twonkies <laughs> from uh, Jimmy Neutron. I really hope someone actually gets that, or has watched Jimmy Neutron to know that reference, because man, that is like, really reaching. But it just reminds me of that. Okay, so... We're going to go into the embassy. I want to see- Ooh! Ooh! Okay, this place looks really cool! It has actual walls, and a roof, and lights! 
And look at that door! It's like a fancy door! It's an actual door! <laughs> this is totally not how it looked like in the SNES version. In the SNES version, it was just like plain walls with a red floor. It was just supposed to look like, oh, Velcro, that's it. Okay. <laughs> but no, they actually put a lot of detail on this, into this place. I am actually kind of shocked. Okay, so... What I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to stop the stream uh, at this point. I think it's a good place to stop. Um, we'll continue this next time. And when we do that, I'll probably have grinded for a couple more levels. Let me see uh, what level Mogger is at the moment. He is currently level 16. I'm probably going to grind up to level... 19 so I can prepare myself for the next portion of the game because the next portion of the game is incredibly difficult Especially with just Mogger alone. So I want to prepare myself for when that happens <laughs> So I'm going to grind to level 19 off screen It's going to be very easy as we've seen Vita and Mogrim can take care of any battle all by themselves um, but yeah, next time we'll continue with SMT1 on the GBA. I am thoroughly enjoying this particular port of the game. And, uh... Uh, I am collecting some good footage for the review that I'm eventually going to be doing. By the way, look forward to that review. I will probably, uh, release it in, like, a couple weeks after I finish this port. Or finish this playthrough. <laughs> um, but yeah. Thank you all for joining today, and I will see you next time. I will probably stream tomorrow. Um, it will either be Persona 2 with Revan, depending on how he feels, or uh, I can play a different game. Maybe Dynasty Warriors. Uh, let me check real quick. I have Dynasty War. I have a b couple of Dynasty Warriors games, specifically Dynasty Warriors uh, Empire games. I just need to sign it to Steam real quick. <laughs> oh, oops. I accidentally uh, put in the wrong password. So, I have Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires and Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires. I've been feeling like playing one of the Empires games recently. Oh, I also have access to Dynasty Warriors 6 via an, uh, Dynasty Warriors 6 Empires, specifically, um, via an emulator. So, I can also play that. Um, I have a bunch of characters on 8 Empires. 9, I have yet to dip into it so it will it will basically be a new experience for me and six empires you know I, that that's always fun so i can figure out which game to play out of those uh tomorrow if if i am not playing persona 2 <laughs> uh but yeah uh, if i end up doom playing that if i end up actually playing uh any of those dynasty war empires games uh i might just spend like the first 20 minutes of the stream just uh talking about random stuff as i wait for people to get into the call or into the um chat so i can actually make uh custom characters for them because <laughs> it's always fun to make custom characters in those games and actually uh role play out the scenarios that the game presents <laughs> especially in dynasty wars 9 because uh it apparently has a lot of really cool events so yeah if anyone's interested in having their characters appear in a Dynasty Warriors Empires playthrough of mine, uh, definitely show up for one of those. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that will be for next time. So, thank you all for joining, and I will see you all later. Have a good night. I don't know how to end these live streams all that well, so I will just end it here. I hope someone has, at least someone has noticed by now that that is pretty much my catchphrase for ending live streams. Ha, ha, ha.